All right, I should be live. So, um, welcome everybody. It, it, good to see you here. Uh, a couple notes before I start the game. Uh, one, uh, some of the guys in the comments, it looked like they thought this was going to be Portal 2 instead of Portal. But uh, Portal 2 actually finished way down in the voting behind Strip Poker and MS Paint. <laughs> and uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, oh, I guess two more things actually. The other thing I wanted to mention, I think as soon as I start this, there's uh, music, if I remember right, that doesn't respond to like the game volume option. So uh, oh, there's not a lot I can do there. I just have to, you know, you just have to suffer with it. It's going to be loud and then it will get better. And the last thing is I'm going to be reading the comments a lot, like more than I do during a uh, Modern Warfare 3 live stream. So because of that, I, I guess, you know, try and hold a conversation throughout this thing. But let's get it started. Nice. Nice. This. Shit. See, I always use my scuff controller, but this one's not that one. Here we go. Now it started. No. New game. Here we go. And there might be loud music here. It's somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm um, in here for a minute. Science Computer Aided Admission Center. We hope your brief detention in the relaxation vault has been a pleasant one. Your specimen has been processed, and we are now ready to begin the test proper. Before we start, however, keep in mind that although fun and learning are the primary goals of all enrichment center activities, serious injuries may occur. For your own safety and the safety of others, please refrain from me. Turn back. The portal will open in three, two, one. All right. So I try not to talk when um, when she's talking because I find that everybody hates that. <laughs> so uh, what are you gonna say? Let's see. Please proceed into the chamber lock after completing each test. First, I need to... however, note the incandescent particle field across the exit. This aperture science material emancipation grill will vaporize any unauthorized equipment that passes through it. For instance, the aperture science weighted storage cube. Just changing my channel to the live stream format. Because I want to see your comments like as they scroll. <clears throat> there we go. All right. <laughs> Someone said I won dance on. I did win dance on. That was uh, that was a pretty big deal for me. I appreciate you guys want dance on really. That's that's what makes it happen. Perfect. Please move quickly to the chamber lock as the effects of prolonged exposure to the button are not part of this test. <laughs> Looking for more comments here. Come on, baby. Oh. <laughs> So I was like tired and telling my wife, like, I wonder if I should stream tonight. Like, am I going to be the like happy and excited version of myself? And she made me a shot of Gamma Labs. And she said not to drink the stuff at the very bottom. So There it is. I done my first shot on camera. Very well. Please be advised that a noticeable taste of ah. is not part of any test protocol, but is an unintended <clears throat> side effect of the app. More than one person asked for the game volume to be louder. Let's try that. Picture signed material emancipation grip, which may, in semi-rare cases, <laughs> emancipate dental fillings, grounds, breathing metal, and teeth. Very 
Portion. You are now in possession of the Aperture Science handheld portal device. With it, you can create your own portals. These intradimensional gates have proven to be completely safe. The device, however, has not. Do not touch the operational end of the device. Do not look directly at the operational end of the device. Do not submerge the device in liquid, even partially. Most importantly, under no circumstances should you... Someone asked if I'm going to try and beat the stream in this... Please or beat the... To the, chamber lock. the game in this stream? And yes, I am trying to beat the game in just this stream. Uh, what am I doing here? So I started from there, I need to go... There, right? Oh. Well done. Well Remember, done. Remember, the Aperture Science Bring Your Daughter to Work Day is the perfect time to have her tested. <clears throat> I'm hearing that the game is too loud now. It's really about the... It's easy to adjust the game volume, but it's hard to adjust my voice volume. So I try to find the balance right. You know, because you can control the volume. Like, that's your choice. It's just whether or not, like, you can hear me over the game or whether or not the, you know, that balance is, is what it's supposed to be. Ooh, subtitles. It's not too loud, it's too quiet. Getting perfect. All right, all right. I think people are. I think I have the volume about right. What are you so smart? <laughs> there will be parts in this game where I don't feel so smart. I'm sure of it. Hmm. What am I doing? All right. And then I need to get, oh, wait, wait. I got this. There we go. As part of a required test protocol, our previous statement suggesting that we would not monitor this chamber was an outright fabrication. Good job. As part <laughs> of a required test protocol, we will stop enhancing the truth in three, two, one. Someone said, any plans for a future Skyrim stream? Yes, I think that um, as soon as the new DLC drops, I'll give Skyrim another go. I think that's how that's going to go. And someone asked, how did Kyle react to the video about him? I made it awkward, man. Like, uh... <laughs> uh it, uh, Paintball Kitty said she just about expected me to come out as gay in the video. Um... Uh, I'm trying to think. So let's see, this thing bounces here. Oh, I just do that. Um, but, uh, and then he texted me and sent me, like, a, you know, let's be best friends necklace. <laughs> so he was teasing me about it. And, uh, um, and then finally he just said, you know, more seriously, I appreciate your friendship or something like that. So, uh, yeah. But it was funny. Yeah, he, you know those, like, best friends forever necklaces where the, the pieces of the heart fit together as a puzzle? He was suggesting that we get those. <laughs> Where is the other thingamajig? Where's the go? Oh, it's right there. Hmm. Oh, I know. Thank you. 
And there we go. Somebody said he came here for a PVR. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Oh, check out the PVR giveaway on his channel, yada yada yada. Uh, a lot of guys ask for PVR advice, and um, here it is. If you're going to live stream, you can't beat the Black Magic uh, products, like the, the BMI. Like, I have the Black Magic Intensity Pro, which is the one that goes inside a desktop machine. Um, I think the shuttle and the other ones work the same way. Any contact with the chamber floor will result in an unsatisfactory mark on your official testing record. Uh oh. Followed by death. Good luck. Um. This thing's bouncing at me. So I think what I want to do. What am I doing? Oh, duh. Silly me. And then it should shoot. Uh, wait, wait. So, I want it to hit there, which means that I need to shoot it there, and then when it bounces out of... Did I get it? Alright! And now I need to get myself... Over here. Sorry, I got distracted by the game. <laughs> oh, someone said, what's up with the camera behind you? It's not set up, it's just... I didn't put it away. That, that's all that's up with it. I had it out, I think, for the Scuff Controller review video. And I use it for the Microwave Series 2 and stuff. So, uh... I, I, I don't know. We were gonna film that. Like, every day, it's like, oh, we gotta film it today. We normally do it on Wednesdays, but my wife wants to start doing it earlier. Um... Very impressive. Please Am I going to buy any of the games from E3? Absolutely. Uh, every game was at E3, so it's hard not to. But, uh... Um, someone said, how much are they? I'm not sure how much what is. LA Kings SMD. Yep, respect, man. I thought that the Kings wouldn't win. It seems like which... The Enrichment Center regrets to inform you that this next test is impossible. Make no attempt to solve it. It seems like anytime a team sends this, you know, like this Dark Horse 8 seed, they get beat up um, as soon as they get to the finals. But that didn't happen with the Kings. And they were the. What is it? Like first team since the 40s to win as an 8 seed? That's, uh. That's pretty impressive. It doesn't happen very often. Someone asked if I can play Minecraft. Uh, yeah, you know, I think we've all but decided to play some Minecraft. Um, I've never played it at all before. I've seen a couple videos, but I wanted my first experience to be like a video that I upload instead of a, a live stream. And then after that, I guess I can live stream and play Minecraft with subs all the time. Uh, but I need to look into it. Like, I don't know how it works, what the Hello, process man. of inviting people will be like. Silly Woody. Alright, alright. I know how to do this, I think. There we go. Spectacular. You appear to understand how a portal affects forward momentum, or to be more precise. I like to think so. Momentum, a function of mass and velocity, is conserved between portals. In layman's terms, speedy thing goes in, speedy thing comes out. <laughs> Someone asked if I'm playing Orange Box on the console, and yes, I am. Oh no, I screwed up. Oh wait, it's not that big of a screw up. I'll be okay. There we go. Am I getting watchdogs? I think so. I mean, it looked pretty interesting on in the show. Um, 
We'll see. We'll see. It also it depends on what kind of stuff my subs like to see also. Like, one thing about Call of Duty that makes it so popular for YouTube is that the games break into like 4 to 12 minute sections. Like, you can easily watch a match of Call of Duty and it's interesting. But a game like Watch Dogs, which takes... I'll make something up. 20 hours? I don't really know. So if um, a game like Watchdog, you know, hypothetically, which could take like 20 hours, um, I don't know what to do next year. Uh, I don't know if that's very YouTube friendly, so that's something that I need to consider. So I need this thing to shoot. Oh wait. Whoa! God damn it. Alright, I'm thinking. Ah, so this thing shoots portals. And I need to put a... I need this guy. Do I shoot there? That doesn't seem like it would even work. Oh wait, maybe I'll go in there? I know. Let's try this. <sighs> I'm waiting for this. I need to... Would I consider playing custom zombies? Does such a thing exist? Alright, so this guy's going to shoot an energy ball. And it's going to die out. Darn it. I think if I wait, there it is, maybe it'll get it. Well done, Woody. <laughs> now I need to get to that spot. I'm sorry. It seems that I can barely think and talk at the same time. Alright, I've done this. Let's see. Custom zombies are real. Oh, is it PC only, though? I have... Hey. You know, before I first streamed Call of Duty... I was nervous that I wouldn't get like a 10 KD every game and people would give me like a super hard time but uh, um, it turned out that didn't really matter that much so <laughs> so I was worried that I wouldn't turn out well then on the PC I also I don't really have much I haven't shot with a mouse in a long time so uh, I'm I guess I'm nervous that I'll look bad, but maybe I shouldn't care. <clears throat> Alright, so I think... Yes, I think I want to press this button. And then go up there. That's my guess. Play some DayZ mod. Oh yeah, is that the... I think I've heard about that. It's like the incredibly buggy thing, but it's also supposed to be incredibly good. Like that's... I think that's Daisy. I'll have this thing solved in a bit. Oh, do I need a quicker way over there than the thing? Oh no, I don't. I'm fine. That door can be closed. Hook my controller to a PC. That might be a good idea. There's a new game Hawking coming out. That's supposed to be like super controller friendly. I don't know. I really ought to develop some like keyboard and mouse skill because this won't be the last game that you know I'll need it for. I tried to play. Uh, what was I trying to play? Alien Swarm, but I don't know. That game just didn't really sink in for me. 
Have I ever played Zombies with Syndicate? I did actually. I played Zombies with Syndicate in a live stream. Nice guy. I talked to Syndicate. I haven't talked to Syndicate in the last couple weeks, but I used to talk to him a ton. Um, he's a good guy. I like Syndicate. Uh, Macker PC. Oh my gosh. Dangerous. Dangerous water there. Uh, is there some place I need to go? I don't remember where I'm going. I came from here. Oh, up there perhaps? So what color was that? Blue? Orange? Let's go, baby! Alright. Blue. Alright. So I guess I need a square. Oh, there's a square up there. Sorry, I want to talk more, but I don't think I've got the cognitive horsepower to, like, talk and play at the same time. <laughs> so, so, you get what you get. Oh, please make this. Alright. Now I need to go back up there. It should still be on the ground here. And we're good. Alright. My favorite game ever. Shucks. That's a tough one, man. I almost want to go old school with like a non-answer. Like, um, I don't know, Doom 1. That game was amazing. Groundbreaking in its day. Laid the it was the first first-person shooter that I know of. Like, first person, that is. I've played other shooters that were third. Um. Now that you are in control of both portals, this next part could take a very, very long time. If you become Am like I missing bumpers, something? Feel free to pass out. An intubation associate will be dispatched to revive you with peptic cell and adrenaline. <laughs> Ah, uh, let's see. Squares, squares, squares. Where are my squares? I think I need to do this bubble thing first. So surely that'll go there. This will go there. Alright. Now that thing's moving. Maybe we'll get... Oh no! I wonder if there's some, like, significantly better way to do this that I'm not thinking of. Now... Oh, the other square is out there? Wait, did I just do something stupid? Ah, I need to take it with me, perhaps? Let go. And... As part of there we go. Previously mentioned required test protocol, we can no longer lie to you. When the testing is over, you will be missed. Someone said Wolfenstein's 3D was the first first person shooter ever. Really? I thought Doom was before that. Somebody Google this. See which is first, Doom 1 or Wolfenstein 3D? Which is the older game? I would like to know. All subjects intending to handle high energy gamma leaking portal technology must be informed that they may be informed of applicable regulatory compliance issues. 
No further compliance information is required or will what? be provided. And you are an excellent test subject. I've totally lost my bearings here. Puzzle time. So... I guess I need to smash this thing with an energy ball. But I don't see an energy ball source. That thing's hard to get to. So I need a need that cube on that little thing of a jig. And then I need an energy ball in this thing. I don't see how to get to that cube and I don't see any energy balls. Maybe if I jump on the thing, it'll get more obvious. Where is it? What happens if I stand on it? What? It is not. I think they're saying... Here. Maybe this game has no sprint. Uh, It's the waterfall all over. Put the portal across the top cube and jump from where the ladders are. Oh, that's a great idea. I should have thought of that too. Thank you. I don't know what happened to me. I lost my brain. Someone said, is this on the Xbox 360? It is on the Xbox 360. And I think I can beat this game tonight. Alright, so that opened this door. Which I'm guessing has... I'm going to take a huge guess. A little shot here. Alright, that was blue. So if I see an energy ball over here, I'll put an orange on it. And hope for the best. anymore and a complimentary victory lift I assume that's you someone said have I played the second portal yes I did I remember I live streamed it the night that it came out and everybody gave me a hard time for being so stupid <laughs> I remember one time the stream was wrong. They were all so mad that I didn't put a portal in a particular spot. And when I did, they all apologized because that totally wasn't it. The enrichment center is committed to the well-being of all participants. All right. Cake and brief counseling will be available at the conclusion of the test. Thank you for helping us help you help us all. Hello, camera. I'm gonna break you or something. To ensure the safe performance of all authorized activities, do not destroy vital testing apparatus. Alright. So that goes there, and then that disappears when I do that. So. There we go, and I need to get.
Ah, I screwed up. Gotcha. This looks like another complimentary victory lift. How long have I been gaming? I started at 9, I think. So half an hour. Uh, the, the one I put up there was blue, right? Am I about to do something horribly stupid? Nope. Uh, that didn't... That didn't work at all. What have I done wrong? Do I need to jump? Oh, do I need to hit the... F I think I know what I need to do. Orange. Oh, no! I stuck. <laughs> Let's try this again. Ah! My sucking never ends. We'll get it. We'll get it. This is not the easiest thing to do. Why would I stream that shit? Exactly! Wow! Maybe I can put this slightly higher. Give myself a little bit more boost. There we go. Alright, let's do that again. Okay. Now I need to get this little bouncy thing... Does it go like that? Let's get a little experimentation here. Alright, close enough, I suppose. Now I need to get back somehow. Oh, didn't quite make it. You saw that little glitch in there? God damn it! Alright, let's try this again. Jump. God damn it. Let's try this again. <laughs> what? Oh. Uh. Alright, alright. We're gonna get this. We're gonna get this. Jump and straight in. God damn it. <laughs> Jump and straight in. God damn it. <laughs> Jump and we're gonna make it. Alright, this clearly isn't working. There we go. Alright. That's how we do it, baby. Just lots of repetitive stuff. Put a blue over there. So in... Alright. Can I do more Europe-friendly streams? I can. It's tricky because I upload my videos Europe-friendly and then... Um... I upload the videos you're friendly and then if I stomp on them with the stream it, it's hard um it's just tricky coordination that's what it's about oh stop it if you played through this game you wouldn't do it without a flaw silly you and I I don't even remember for sure what color I just shot I'm hoping oh here it is nice come on little platformy thing there we go like a boss Alright, I'll need something here. And I, I don't even know where this thing's supposed to come out of. What am I shooting? Oh, that thing? So, surely... Ah... Uh, Alright, buttons. So, there's two doors on there. I need to hit these two buttons and then zap that thing. Alright, ready? Button. Button. Zappy there. Zappy there. Gotcha. The Aperture Science Self-Esteem Fund for Girls? 
Nice. Uh, Woody, why are you so stupid? I don't know. <sighs> the next time I do a European friendly stream, check to see if there's a soccer match on. I guess I'll do that. The Americans are fussing right now because I did it during an NBA Finals match, but what are you going to do? Due to mandatory scheduled maintenance, the appropriate chamber for this testing sequence is currently unavailable. It has been replaced with a live fire course mm. designed for military androids. The Enrichment Center apologizes for the inconvenience and wishes you the best of luck. Somebody asked how my wrist was. Hey. Um, for those that don't know, what? Are you still there? Please put me down. It's me. Ah, why are you shooting me? Alright. Alright, that was a horrible mistake. Yes. Who are you? Alright, this is going fine so far. Oh, stop shooting at me. Settle down, settle down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Oh. Can I do an Ask Me Anything? Like, on Reddit? I've actually done a couple of them. Like, the only reason I haven't done... What? I... Oh. <laughs> the only reason I haven't done one more recently is that... Uh... I didn't want to get accused of using Ask Me Anything as like a promotional tool. Like I, you know, I, I did them. It went well. I don't want to do one like every month to be like a "Hey, I'm Woody, look at me" type thing. So, uh, yeah. Oh, it didn't knock over. All right, all right, we can still fix this. I think I'm going to try a slightly different route this time, which is to shoot the ceiling above him. And then... Oh, I missed him! Son of a... Stop shooting me! God, God damn it! Okay, okay, okay. This is going terrible. <laughs> uh... Should I just Rambo it? What if I just Rambo this thing? There we go. That worked out okay. Hmm. All right. <laughs> Get up! 
walk through the door. He won't. Oh. Uh. Gaming leagues, if you keep spamming your ban, stop it. Heat or thunder? Man, I don't know. I kind of feel for LeBron. He's taking so much heat. Uh-oh. Terrible place to save. I think I'm the only guy in the country who's like, oh, poor LeBron. What the? You're back? I don't even know who is shooting me right now. Is it through my portal hole that they're shooting me? <sighs> Alright, how do you like me now? Alright, and now we're gonna... <laughs> alright, alright, alright. This is going okay. What? I stuck on this guy. Let's keep working here. Aha. Uh -huh. Now you're done too. This is as far as we've gotten so far. Someone asked how old Colin is. He turned nine recently. So, that's how old he is. Where are you? Where are you? Target, put me down. I'll put you down. You know what? Does this work? Hey. Oh, whoa! Oh, God damn it! <laughs> alright, alright. The Enrichment Center once again reminds you that Android uh, is a real place where you will be sent <laughs> at the first sign of defiance. My daughter's birthday is coming sooner. She actually turns uh, five days and she'll be 13. So she's the next birthday in the family five days from now. <laughs> All right. The vital apparatus ant will deliver a weighted companion cube in three, two, one. This weighted companion cube will accompany you through the test chamber. Please take care of it. The symptoms most commonly produced by enrichment center testing are superstition, perceiving inanimate objects as uh, alive, and hallucinations. The enrichment center reminds you that the weighted companion cube will never threaten to stab you and, in fact, cannot speak. I'm trying to remember what to do with some of these things. <laughs> Let's see. We'll put you there. Wait, that's only one hole. We'll put you here. Thinking. There should be a little ball of fire coming through, right? I think I screwed something up. <laughs> Let's check this out. Uh, Alright, so here was... Whoa! That's where it goes. Alright. Oops. And now I need the blue one there, but we'll give it a second. Now we'll put the blue one there. I will wait. Hop off. Hop on. Gotcha. That's one. Now...
blue one there. What if I just put the blue one here? Will another ball come shooting out of it? Did I ruin anything? I think I did. I think. Oh, shucks. I think that should have been orange. We'll try that. This thing's broken, isn't it? Alright, no problem. We'll use this one. This one still works. Oh. Oh no! I'm not sure it can travel that far. Ah, oh, that's okay. I think I just need to put a blue one here, and I'm good to go. Let's see. The Ooh, whoop. You that the weighted companion cube that's too. In the event that the weighted companion cube does speak, the enrichment center urges you to disregard its advice. There's a little shooty thing there, and a guy there, so I think I know what to do. What's the aim of this game? To escape from the testing center. And it's kind of a puzzle based game where I do all sorts of weird things. Someone asked if I went to E3. I did go to E3. It's all a bunch of games and such. I think this one's like super simple, right? You just do this. Oop. Now I have three little jumpy things. If I remember right, these jumps are deceptively hard. And... I didn't bring my companion cube with me. Man, what kind of friend am I? You did it. The weighted companion cube certainly brought you good luck. However, it cannot accompany you for the rest of the test. And <laughs> this unfortunately, is funny. Must be euthanized. Please escort your companion cube to the Aperture Science Emergency Intelligence Incinerator. Someone asked how good a friend am I with Joe Lozon? We probably talk, I'll say, two or three times a week. We talk today. Um. You know, he, he's a really good guy. I like him a lot. Uh, I feel like I'm supposed to be doing something. Rest assured that an independent panel of ethicists has absolved the Enrichment Center, Aperture Science employees, and all test subjects of any moral responsibility for the Companion Cube euthanizing process. You euthanized your faithful companion cube more quickly than any test subject <laughs> on record. Congratulations. What the hell? Oh, this way. Someone asked how I'm doing this on YouTube. Um, I think live streaming is still only open to certain partners. Uh, the reason I got it is Machinima hooked me up with it. Like Machinima said, hey, would you like to do it, etc. And uh, I said yes. So that's how I'm able to live stream on, on YouTube, because Machinima sort of set it up. Am I planning on buying Assassin's Creed 3? I don't know. It's the most interesting one to me, because it's in America, and that's appealing to me. But... Uh, is required to remind you that you will be baked and then there will be cake. I don't I don't know. So I might check it out. I'm not really quite sure. Am I supposed to jump like this? No. That was totally not what I was supposed to do, I assume. Somebody asked what started my YouTube career. It didn't start as a career. It started because I wanted to make friends with other YouTubers. And, uh, well, 
and then there will be cake. <laughs> And I guess from there, it, like, turned into a YouTube career. It turned into a career, kind of, because, uh... Do I have to jump to make this? Oh! Face bomb. Someone asked if we planned to make the dungeons... Oh, uh, to answer the first question, I just wanted to make friends. That's why I started. I wanted to meet other people. Do I plan to make the... Dungeons and Dragons live stream that we talked about on Painkiller already. Yes, we actually reached out to the makers of Dungeons and Dragons and asked them, you know, for some help. Like, we're not really experienced in the game. So we were like, you know, what sorts of things can we do to ensure that the, that the live stream works out? So wait, where did I come from? Did I come from there? Yeah, I think I did. I think I need to get this way. I think I need to go there, here, and then just not screw up the jump. Oh! Oh, that was close. Alright, that's two. There's a three up there. So I need to go there. That worked. And is there... Do I just walk back again? Alright. I don't know if there's a better way to do this. I feel like I'm not doing it the right way. Uh, is is there a four up there, I assume? Oh, the four's over there. So, I, I guess I need to go there. That was blue. Well, that was better. Yes. <laughs> and now I need to go over there with a companion cube in my hands. Was I supposed to be bringing a companion cube all this way? I don't even know. Oh. <laughs> I'm not welcome here. Hmm. I need to think this through. Get bastard. All right. We'll get this. Brick me, brick. Do I ever let my kids play on my account? Yeah, sometimes. Get him? God, it missed him. Why am I stuck on this thing? So something is wrong. Hit him. Oh, I got one. Alright, one down. Shucks, that thing's pretty far away. Let's try that. Damn it, damn it, damn it! Okay, this seems to be a spot where I'm not shot. So I'll put an orange right there. A blue right. I missed it. Put a blue right there. Try that. Maybe that'll take out this guy. Got him. Got him. Now I need, I guess, uh, blue there. Orange there. Hopefully, hopefully. Take out this guy. Gotcha. And now, let's see. I'll put a blue right there. An orange right there. And hopefully it takes out that guy. Gotcha. Okay, that's one less thing to worry about. 
now I need to take out this thing, I suppose. So, let's see. Um. So, I'll hit this button. And then, quickly, let's try it. This might take a few tries. Oh, it's closed already. Damn it. Alright, that was a screw up. <laughs> I think I need to put it there. I know what I need to do. So where's this thing pointing? That way. So when it points this way, I'll put one right there. And then as it goes through that blue thing, I'm going to jump up to this wall. Here it is, here it is, here's my shot. Oh no! <laughs> I totally had it. I had it so good. Uh, I think I will play some Medal of Honor. I always get those games. Alright. So here, I need to watch this thing. I always get them, but I don't stick to them that long. Come on, baby. Did it... Oh, it happened! Nice. Now I've got this jumpy little platform thing. I don't remember what's next. Someone wrote, LOL, you died. Ha ha. I read it in Nelson's voice from The Simpsons. <laughs> I think that's an impossible jump. Alright, so I can go there. There's nothing good happening down there. But there's quite the jump happening here. I didn't press the button. Let's try the button. What tech do I use to record? I use a Blackmagic Intensity Pro, unless I'm streaming, at which point I use an HD PVR. That's how you do it, baby. Now what am I doing with this thing? I don't even remember. Oh, it's on the other side. I remember I didn't have a cube at the very start. I think that's what I'm going to bring it back. Uh, <laughs> I think the whole point of this thing was to get this cube. So, when I do PKA 100, what should it be? Should it be 12 hours? Like, one problem with the 12 hour idea is that, like, I'm just me. You know, like, what if Kyle or, or Wings, Jordy, aren't interested in, in going for 12 hours? Then what happens? Like, I feel like I'm making promises for other people. Oh, shucks. So I think I need to put this maybe down here and do that super jump again. No, I need to press this button and then run back. That's what I need to do. This should be easy. No super jump. Am I interested in playing Minecraft? Um, <laughs> 24 hour PKA is a lot. That's, and I think a 12 hour PKA will stand out from the rest. Like, that'd be a pretty big deal. Alright. So, let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I'll put that guy there, I guess, and this guy here. Whoa, whoa! You forgot to go back. I, I didn't press the button, that was the whole point. 
So I think the whole point of this exercise was to grab this cube and bring it back here. Because I needed it for that. And I think I just beat that part. Save, maybe? Cool, saving. This is incredibly difficult. <laughs> I think I've got to like, momentum jump up all these things. Let's see. You guys, I'm going to screw this up a lot. I hope you like watching me screw up. Alright, chill Woody. Where is it? Oh my god. The advice that the next test requires exposure to uninsulated electrical parts that may be dangerous under certain conditions. For more information, please attend an enrichment center electrical safety seminar. Somebody asked what happened to my goddamn wrist. I can only imagine he's been asking a couple times he's so frustrated. It was at um, the Chicago subscriber like paintball meetup event. I was wrestling with FPS Russia and Joe Lozon, and somewhere in that night, I uh, I think I landed with my hand like this. And um, I went to the doctor recently to get like an X-ray prescription, but I haven't gotten the X-ray yet. And she thinks the ligament was torn off the bone, and she described it like. Um, Welcome to the final test. Oh, quiet. When you are done. You will drop the device in the Equipment Recovery Annex. Enrichment Center regulations require both hands to be empty before any case. Oh! Um, oh, oh, she described it like tape on a cardboard box, where, like, the ligament tears and it takes a little bit of bone with it. Like, the tape tears and takes a little box with it. So my, my wrist is a bit messed up. But, um, it's getting better. So, maybe it's not that serious. Who the heck knows? Uh, that seemed easy. Alright, now what am I doing? I'm supposed to press that button, maybe? Did I do something wrong and miss a step? Oh! I need an easy button. T-Mart has one. Whenever we beat Trash Talkers, he presses the that was easy button, and it's pretty cool. <sighs> um, Alright. This is a bit of an issue. Oh! Crap. Oh wait, I've got a better idea on how to deal with those bubble things. Energy balls. Whoa, whoa, God, I... Sorry, 
I didn't realize I was starting on that thing. <laughs> Someone says I say button, and he's right. I think it's like a Philadelphia accent. That's that's the deal. I had a friend named Mike Mitten, M-I-T-T-E-N, and he had like a similar frustration, like, let's stick it up there, won't have to worry about it. Like everyone pronounced his name Mitten without any T's in the middle, so, but that's me, you. All right. Um, bit of an issue. malfunction prior to your victory candescence. Thank you for participating in this Aperture Science Computer <laughs> Enrichment Activity. Goodbye. <laughs> Place the device on the ground, then lie on your stomach with your arms at your sides. A party associate will arrive shortly to collect you for your party. Make no further attempt to leave the testing area. Assume the party escort submission position or you will miss the party. The party escort submission position. Awesome. This is the thing. If a game has no yellow brick road, I find myself completely confused as to where to go. I guess I want to go on... Did I just come from there? Am I going back? What? Oh! How often do I play Call of Duty? I don't know. A couple times a week. I used to play every day. And, uh, I don't play every day anymore. I I've been not playing as much, um, since I hurt my wrist. Like, I'm mostly just the live streams, actually, lately. But, uh, you know, I'd like to play more. Let's see. I don't know where I'm going. Where did I come from? These sides all look the same. It looks like I was once... That was the fan part. And then I managed to get over here. And is the door was locked, right? Oh, the other fan part, maybe? And now, maybe that walkway up there? Don't fall in the ground, Woody. Is that where I want to be? No, this is a huge step backwards. Or maybe it's not. Maybe I need to go up. That 
That was up. Alright. Now... Maybe... Maybe this way? Cake is a lie. Hello, is anyone there? Woohoo! What am <laughs> Someone asked about Chris move on PKA. Uh, we could do that. We've had him on before. He's a really nice guy. He's a good guest. He um he usually needs more notice than we give him. It was a fun test, and we're all impressed at how much you won. The test is over. Come back. Usually when we ask him, he's like, yeah, I'll do it, but not this week, because I need more notice that you just gave me. Which is fair, but that's like why we don't have him more often. Just gonna hit the ceiling, kill me. No. I don't know what I'm doing. What am I? Maybe I just keep walking? So I'm supposed to go that way. This is where I just... I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> There's got to be a way... Up here. Oh, 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 wait. That'll do. Alright, so I wanted to go that way. And then when I go this way, aha, I went there. To the other side of the thing. Made a lot of sense. And now that I'm here, I have to go someplace new. It's definitely not back. Oh, wait. Go up there. Maybe jump better this time. Aha! There we go. Someone says, when is Painkiller ready? Painkiller ready is Thursday night at 8 o'clock. Right <laughs> She's so discouraging. 
Uh oh, that's gonna kill me if I sit there. Is that thing gonna smush me on the ceiling? That's bad. Assuming I'll be able to see more when I get on top of these things. Someone said, Am I definitely doing pink you already this e week? Yes. Yeah, oh, we can put that there. And then maybe this. Woohoo, smush me now. That's good. That worked out well. And. I assume I'm supposed to go this way? Kyle in the next pain killer already, that's funny. What am I doing? Alright. Apparently I need to go up here. And then Oh, probably wanna go there. Whoa! Did I just do something good? No, I'm right back where I was. But I wanted to go onto this thing, I think. I think I want to get up there. There we go. That looks insanely dangerous. You really shouldn't be here. This isn't safe for you. This looks insanely dangerous too. For you to turn back. I'm not it's better. Alright. What the fuck? <laughs> alright, alright, alright. What do we got here? Stop it with all your blocky things. What's PKA? PKA is a podcast that I do with a couple friends every uh, Thursday night. Don't drop me. Okay. Oh, now what? Now I need to get higher up there. I think I want to stand on one of those things, maybe? I don't see how you stand on one of those things. Alright. Oh. Ah, you dropped me, but I don't care, because I should just be able to fire a blue. Oh, nope. I'm doomed. Alright. Now I'm at the top. It's telling me to go down? Didn't I just work so hard to go up? Alright, I'll go down. And... I assume... <laughs> I'm going to die. Will I do Minecraft on the Xbox? Yeah, I think I will. Oh my god, I survived that. Alright. They say that I want to go down here with the arrows. Loading. That's always a good thing. How much does this game cost? I don't know. It's cheap now. Like, it 
It might. I think it's like twenty dollars. And it, it's actually a bunch of games. It's the orange box. I think this is on um, a downloadable now as an Xbox Marketplace game. So I'm not sure how much it is. I guess I have, haven't been helpful at all. Sorry about that. That has come from this. No, no. I just came from. I dropped in right. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was crap. Didn't seem fair. I... All right. Hmm. You're not a good person. You know that, right? <laughs> Alright, that worked out fine. That's where I came from. That's not where I want to be. These steps lead to nowhere. Hmm. Oh, probably up here? I don't know what I'm doing. Use the force. Well, that's not helpful. Hmm. That looked like something. But I don't know what kind of thing it may have been. All right. You don't hate me. Well, thanks. I don't hate you either. Over here. The cake is a lie. The cake is a lie. The cake is a lie. Uh... I see nothing. It definitely said to go in here, right? Did it say to go up? <laughs> what the hell am I doing? Oh, there's like a jumpy thing there. Oh, wait, 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 wait! Yeah, baby. Mm hmm. That's how you do it. This is your fault. It didn't have to be like this. I'm not kidding now. Turn back, or I will kill you. I'm going to kill you. You're not killing me. Um...
Shoot. I think I need to walk back and I don't know what I'm doing. Why is it I never seem to know what I'm doing? <laughs> where did I come from? This is where I'm going. How, didn't I just walk over here? How did this happen? Why am I so lost? Oh, the door! I shut the door, that's why I'm so confused. If that worked out right, then this block thingy should be broken. There'll be a cube on the ground. There we go. <sighs> you guys are all shouting the door. It's a waterfall moment. Alright. Say JZAG. <laughs> I don't need a Black Ops 2 pre-order though. Like I, I'm hoping I can get the game early somehow. How much time does it take before I see your comments? Well, I just saw that one. So there's a indicator. It's a little bit of time. I wish it was instant, but it's not as instant as I want it to be. I miss any? Yep. Damn it. I suck. <laughs> oh, what am I doing? So I think I need a yellow on the ground here. Yeah, so I'll jump from here, put a yellow on the ground, and maybe make this jump. Let's see. Woohoo! No! Let's try this again. Damn it! I am bringing the suck. Got it. <laughs> I want to just like oh, shucks. All right. I think I need to get up there. I think what I need to do shoot a hole there and then jump off the side of the wall. Do I get paid if somebody uses ad blocker? I think I do now. I used to not get paid. But I think I do now. I'm not even sure. I just try not to complain. You know, like that's that's how it goes. Whoa! Oh! Damn it. I'll complain about that.
Alright. Nobody wants to hear me complain. Please say my name, Zachary. YOLO, YOLO, YOLO. <laughs> Am I getting Halo 4? Maybe. I'm not sure. Like, Halo seems interesting as a game. But, um... Halo 4 is only single platform? No, I'm not drunk. <laughs> Halo 4 is only single platform, and I'm not sure if, like, single platform games... I don't know. Like, in terms of YouTube, they're not always the greatest idea. Hey, this is the end. It takes a little while, though, so it's not quite over yet. Well, you found me. Congratulations. Was it worth it? Because despite your violent behavior, the only thing you've managed to break so far is my heart. Hmm. Maybe you could settle for that and we'll just call it a day. I guess we both know that isn't going to happen. You chose this path. Now I have a surprise for you. Deploying surprise in five, four, Time for a second. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. Do you see that thing that fell out of me? What is that? It's not the surprise. I've never seen it before. Never mind. It's a mystery I'll solve later. By myself. Because you'll be dead. Where are you taking that thing? I wouldn't bother with that thing. My guess is that touching it will just make your life... You're kidding me. Did you just stuff that aperture science thing we don't know what it does into an aperture science emergency intelligence incinerator? That has got to be the dumbest thing that- Whoa, 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 whoa. Good news. I figured out what that thing you just incinerated did. It was a morality core they installed after I flooded the enrichment center with a deadly neurotoxin to make me stop flooding the enrichment <laughs> center with a deadly neurotoxin. So get comfortable while I warm up the neurotoxin emitters. Huh. Neurotoxin. The core has minutes. some ancillary responsibilities. Uh -oh. I can't shut off the turret defenses. Oh well. If you want my advice, you should just lay down in front of a rocket. Trust me. Damn it. All right. Keep doing whatever it is you think you're doing. Really good advice, aren't it's the way to go. That thing you burned up isn't important to me. Who are you? It's the fluid catalytic cracking you. It makes shoes for orphans. Nice job breaking it, hero. What the heck? This isn't brave. It's murder. What did I have to do to you? The difference. You think you're doing some damage? Two plus two is... In base four, I'm fine. I let you survive this long because I was curious oh, no. about your behavior. Well, you've managed to destroy that part of me. But unfortunately, as much as I Ah, oh, shucks, it missed! I can't get the neurotoxin into that seemed like a pretty good master. shot. I'd just like to point out that you were given an opportunity to succeed. There we go. A big party that all your friends were invited to. I invited your best friend, the companion, to it. Of course, he couldn't come because you murdered him. All your other friends couldn't come either because you don't have any other friends because of how unlikable you are. It says so right here in your personnel file. Unlikable. Liked by no one. A bitter, unlikable loner Mine, whose passing shall not be more. Shall not be more. That's exactly cake. what it says. Listen, it's the recipe for cake. Very official. It also says you were adopted. <laughs> So that's funny too. <laughs> she just called me adopted. <laughs> Speaking of curiosity, you're curious about what happens after you die. Neurotoxin. <laughs> so deadly. <laughs> Joking. Are you kidding? When I said deadly neurotoxin, so deadly was in massive sarcasm quote. I could take a bath in this stuff. Rub it right into my eyes. Honestly, it's not deadly at all. To me. You on the other hand are going to find its deadliness. Damn it. I'm dead. I think I might have to start over. 
So get comfortable while I warm up the neurotoxin. Damn it! Monsters. I made a mistake. <laughs> I suck. Oh, may have Let's see. Responsibilities. I can't shut off the turret defenses. Oh well. If you want my advice, you should just lie down in my rocket. Trust me. Neurotoxin. Alright. Keep doing whatever it is you think you're doing. Hearing you and giving you good advice aren't mutually exclusive. The rocket really is the way to go. That thing you burned up isn't important to me. It's the fluid catalytic crap. You think you're doing some damage? Two plus two is. In base four, fine. I. Your behavior. Well, you've managed to destroy that part of me. Unfortunately, as much as I'd love to know, I can't get the neurotoxin into your head any faster. One, I'd just like to point out that you were given every opportunity to succeed. There was even going to be a party for you. A big party that all your friends were invited to. I invited your best friend, the companion cube. Of course, he couldn't get to She invited my best friend, the companion cube, to the party. Deadly was in massive sarcasm quote. I could take a bath of this stuff, put it on cereal, rub it right into my eyes. Honestly, it's not deadly at all. To me. You, on the other hand, are going to find its deadliness a lot less funny. Who's gonna make the cake? Damn it! I'm gone? You look. You're wasting your time. Damn it! I keep you missing it. Me. You don't have a whole lot left to waste. What's your point anyway? I can't grab it. Survive. Why doesn't it grab? I have your brain scanned and permanently backed up in case something terrible happens. It just beeps. It's just about to. Don't believe me? Here, I'll put you on. That's you. That's how dumb you sound. You've been wrong about every single thing you've ever done, including this. Wait, did I knock it down? Smart. You're not a scientist. You're not a doctor. You're not even a full-time employee. Here, I got it. Go so wrong. Things have changed since the last time you left the building. What's going on? They will make you wish you were back in here. I have an infinite capacity for knowledge, and even I'm not sure what's going on outside. All I know is I'm the only thing standing between us and them. Well, I was. That was cool. Your entire life has been a mathematical error. Mathematical error I'm about to correct. <laughs> oh, I'm getting sucked up. Do I watch soccer at all? No, I can't. The last time I watched soccer, like, the U.S. women beat the Chinese 10 years ago or something like that. I'm not really a, a soccer guy. I used to play as a little kid. Am I excited for Dead Space 3? Yes! I still haven't finished Dead Space 2. I'm in a tough spot. I might lower the difficulty. I don't know. I wanted the achievement points. Listen. Here it is! Come on! Bring me closer! My wife made me a cake just like that. Am I proud of this accomplishment? No. <laughs> Here comes the song. You 
this was a triumph I'm making a note here Huge success It's hard to overstate my satisfaction Aperture science We do what we must because we can For the good of all of us Except the ones who are dead But there's no sense crying over every mistake You just keep on trying till you run out of cake And the science gets done And you make a neat plan for the people who are still alive <laughs> Uh, one guy asked me to sing. You don't want me to ruin the song? I'm not even angry. I'm being so sincere right now. Even though you broke my heart and killed me, I'm torn into pieces and threw every piece into a pile. <laughs> Reunified, I love you too. I have this song on my iPhone. I don't know how that came across, but yeah. <laughs> uh, I have that song on my own phone for real. I blasted in the car. So, I usually try to make these live streams uh, two hours. I was thinking maybe I would do some uh, like Q&A for the next 15 minutes, if that interested you guys. I don't know, let me know what you think. Uh, I think... Let me let me turn off the Xbox. That's the way I know for sure. Just a second. We'll kill the music. And then let me fix this camera. When I go full screen on the camera, I like to um, to make it not zoom in like it is. So we'll change that. Wow, I've got this like evil looking. We'll go like that. And here we are. There's me. <laughs> oh, no, I've got a pimple. But uh, what was I going to say? Oh, oh, people ask about my camera all the time. It's a Logitech. I forget the model number. But uh, it was like 120, 120 bucks, if that helps you figure out, like if you wanted to buy the same one. Uh, I bought it because it was 1080p, but it can do this. Like, so picture a, a 1080p frame, right? And then picture a 720p frame inside it. If you lower it to 720p frame, it has facial recognition. So what it does, like when I move my head here, it takes that 720p frame and just like tracks along my face and puts it wherever it's supposed to go. When I just show a little bit of me in the corner, like uh, I do during gameplay, then I think it looks a little better, right? Because you get to actually like see my expressions and frustration and stuff like that. And it tracks me regardless of where I am. 
But when I'm doing like uh, nothing but me, and I use the big picture like you see right now, I think it's better to not turn on that facial tracking nonsense and uh, and just like show it in 1080p, which is what it's capturing in. I broadcast in two sh formats, 480p and 720p. So uh, let me talk about that for a second. Um, I used like in my dreams, I just shoot it out in like 1080p and give you a really nice stream. But the trouble is, uh, some of you have no problem like receiving a 1080p stream. And other guys would complain that it's buffering constantly. Like, oh, it's buffering, it's buffering, the stream sucks, etc. So um, what I do, instead of just shooting out one good-looking stream, I put out two. And one's at 480p, and one's at 720p. And if your computer and your bandwidth is good enough such that you can do 720p and it doesn't buffer and it's fine, then you can watch that. If it's not, then the 480p stream works with just about everybody. So, so that's that. that. That's what I do. Uh, I'm looking for questions. Do I or do you play Team Fortress 2? Oh man, so um I've played Team Fortress 2. I have the orange box which comes with it. I think most people agree that Team Fortress 2 on the Xbox is not nearly as good as it is on the PC. Like it doesn't get the same level of support. Over on the PC, Valve is free to just update it for free and without like uh, glitches. On the Xbox, they have to go through Microsoft's Act of Congress to put patches out. And I think Microsoft doesn't let you do lots of things for free, which Valve would like to do. So instead, they'd be getting blasted for doing like $15 DLCs all the time. So, uh, um, yeah, that's I, I've tried it. Another thing is, um, like, here's my take on it. Like, when I first started playing Call of Duty, and I know I always have subs that say, like, oh, what do you suck? But I don't actually suck at Call of Duty. Um, I think my kill-death ratio, like, finally hit one after about 40,000 kills. So it took me a while to get competent at Call of Duty, like, to know what I was doing in it. And um, even today in TDM, like, I don't instinctively know where the other team is spawning all the time. And I feel like some of my peers do. Like, they just, like, all right, you know, in, in Team Deathmatch, to me, like, I, I don't know. Like, I always know where they're going to be spawning in most of the objective game types. But in TDM, I'm still a little bit lost sometimes. What I'm getting at with all this, back to the Team Fortress thing, is I don't want to invest the time in another, like, what I consider to be a competitive game to get good at it. Like, I, COD is kind of my competitive game, and then I like playing a lot of other games that anybody can be good at. Like, what you just saw, Portal, anybody can be good at that. Borderlands, like, dude, everybody's good at Borderlands. Like, is there even such a thing as good? Like, you just play it and you enjoy yourself. So I play more games than people know. Uh, I often, you know, they're like, what are you not even a gamer? You're just a COD player. No, no. I just post a lot of Call of Duty on my channel because it fits YouTube so well. All the games are like 4 to 12 minutes and, and it really fits YouTube. Um, but I play other games as well. I've got, if it gives you any indication, like 14,000 achievement points. So that's not a ton, but, you know, it's certainly not like Call of Duty is the only game I've ever played. 14,000 achievement points is a, is a gamer score. So, uh, so yeah. You know, a lot of times people say, like, are you going to play this? Are you going to play that? And I might play him and not put it on YouTube. I'm not even sure. But um, one of the reasons Call of Duty is so... Do I have herpes? No, it's just a pimple. Um, one of the reasons Call of Duty is so YouTube-friendly is that everything breaks down into those, like, 4 to 12 minutes um, sections. So so that's that. Uh, someone asked, do I own a Wii? I don't. I, I, I do have a Kinect. Um, for the Xbox. I actually have two of them, one upstairs and one downstairs. But, uh, oh, fun fact. When my wife and I do the dancing videos, uh, the the inset that you're watching and the scores, they're not even the same game. Like, what we do is we go upstairs and we capture the dancing gameplay in the man cave, and then we go downstairs where there's enough room and a better backdrop and capture the two of us dancing. So when I put them together on the video, it's not the dancing and the people at the same game type. Like it's they're they look like they're synced because we're doing it twice, but they're not actually totally synced up. And uh like you you'll notice like sometimes my like my wife wore her wedding dress one time. I don't have herpes, it's just a pimple, I swear. <laughs> Tried to get in close and show you my pimple. Um uh yeah yeah so sometimes people are like how did it pick up her legs in that wedding dress? And it's because um uh I uh uh, we we filmed it separately, so so that's that. The actual score of her in a wedding dress was dreadful because it it didn't pick up her legs at all. So so that's that. 
Someone says that an M and M shirt. It is. I am. Um, I don't actually dress like this all day, every day. But I don't have herpes. <laughs> but um, I don't dress like this all day, every day. But uh, oh look, it's a brand new shirt. It still had the tag. But when I live stream, I usually put on some sort of silly shirt. Uh, half the time, it's something that I sell. I don't sell the M and M shirts. But um, I don't know. I just. I guess I dress up for the live stream. I put on something special. So that's that. Uh, what games will I be getting? I don't, the next game I'm psyched about is well, Borderlands 2 is on my list. Um, what else was I going to say? Borderlands 2 is on my list. Um, Assassin's Creed 3 kind of catches my interest. Um, the neat thing about Watch Dogs is that it was brand new you know, IP, uh, intellectual property, I mean to say. So, uh, like, it's not a sequel, and I'm kind of excited about the notion of a game that's not just a repeat of other games that we've played. Uh, what brand TV is that in the background? So there's a story behind that. <laughs> the first HD TV I got, it was like a 55-inch um, uh, plasma, but it was by Vizio, or 52-inch, or 50, or something like that. And before that, I was totally excited about... It's not a cold sore either. Stop it. Um, bef I've actually never had a cold sore like in my whole life. And I'm kind of psyched about that. Like I know some people, they go in the sun and they get cold sores and stuff. And I feel like lucky. Like, all right, you know, I've just got one wife. I'm not kissing anybody else. And I can just, uh, um, you know, know that I'm going to go through life without cold sores, which is kind of cool. But um, anyway, yeah. So when I first got the Vizio back in the day, this is maybe five years ago. They were really known for having a huge amount of lag, but I thought that I was going to be like a much better Call of Duty player because suddenly it would be in HD instead of SD. I'd have a um, 16 by 9 resolution where I was playing in 4 by 3, so I thought I'd have like a bigger field of vision. And um, I thought this new TV was going to be awesome, but it wasn't. It was terrible. This is the Vizio Plasma. There was a delay that I had never had before. There was motion blur that I had never had before. I felt completely blind. Um, you know, everyone has, a lot of people have their, like, I broke a controller story. And I've never broke a controller, but that is the only time I've, like, full-on raged. I actually did throw my controller down, and the battery came off the back, but it didn't break or anything. It just, the battery came off. And that was so embarrassing. Like, you throw the controller and you're mad, and then you're like, Look at you, jackass. Now you've got controller parts like around the living room, and that's that's lame. <laughs> so I did this like, you know, little pickup of shame where I uh dealt with um, you know, my own rage. So what I did is you know how they say like don't drive angry? For me it was don't shop angry. And I I, I went to the store and, and like didn't even care about um money or anything, and I just bought what was the best gaming TV uh, out there, which is the Panasonic Plasma. So that's what we have for downstairs. And when it came time to equip the man cave, um, there was a Panasonic Plasma on sale at Sears for like $600. I think it's a 46-inch Panasonic Plasma. And um, uh, so I bought that and, and did it. My my room is kind of cool. I'll slide aside. Um, it's That TV is built into the wall. And then I can't see it now because the stream's slightly delayed. But you can see my electronics are all built into the wall, too. The computer's hanging out a few inches. But whatever, it's all built into the wall. And um, uh, that means that I'm, I'm able to have, like, a TV and an Xbox and a PS3 and a computer and a hard drive and a Switch and a an PVR and another Switch and all this crazy stuff. And it doesn't take any room in the room. So, like, I really value having, like, this open space to, uh, to spread out in and, and get, like, my elbow room. So, uh, so yeah, I did all that. Someone said unneeded carpet. <laughs> it is needed, but not for like carpet carpet. It, you know why the carpet's needed? Because this room has hardwood floors and it doesn't really have very much furniture. And without like a carpet and some canvas paintings on the walls and like drapes on the windows, the, uh, the echo in this room is dreadful. It like, gets bad for commentating. It's bad for everything. So, uh, like the real reason that I have carpet is just to kill the echo. That's what it does. Um, let's see. Can I show my guns? I can. I've done it a couple times before. Like, are you guys really interested in my guns? I'll, I'll wait and see if anybody else wants to see my guns. I find them to be kind of a boring topic. But uh, if they're not, then 
I don't care. I'll show you my guns. What do people say? How do I keep my hairline so amazing? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like, I'm, oh, people do want to see the guns. Okay, I'll uh, I'll grab some. It's not a huge gun collection, but uh, I'll show you what I have. One second. So let's see. This is a nine millimeter Smith and Wesson. It's actually loaded. You can see there's bullets in here. I keep one in the chamber, so they're they're hollow point bullets. This is my self defense gun. I've never sh shot it in self defense, but I've shot it at the range like a gazillion times. And uh, yeah, it's a real gun. It's a nine millimeter Smith Wesson M&P. When I bought it, I thought I was going to get a Glock. I thought that um, like that's what I wanted. I wanted like a modern shooter of some sort, you know, and I wanted it to be full size because I was fairly new to guns at the time. And a full size gun's easier to shoot because it's heavier. But um, I rented a bunch of guns at the range, and uh, this was the one that I liked the most. So, uh, so there it is. I keep all my guns in holsters just because I like having the uh, the trigger covered. So, like it one time, I didn't have it in a holster, and I just kept it in a, like a range bag. And um, uh, I pulled it, I was like taking it out of the bag. And as I did, my thumb or something found the trigger and it was even pointed at my hip. And that was a, uh, you know, that was like a scary thing. So since then I learned like, you know what? I should keep all my guns in a holster and that way I'll never, like, you can see it covers the trigger. I don't accidentally touch the trigger. I'll get another gun. So, uh, I find guns with different actions to be kind of interesting, and uh, this guy here is a lever action gun. So, let me just make sure it's empty. It's empty. So anyway, um, it's a Henry Golden Boy. This is like an old gun company. I think they existed like in cowboy days and stuff. So, uh, you shoot it, you go like this, shoot it. That's a, uh, it's a shiny gun. It's only a 22. They call it a plinker. And the, the interesting thing about 22s is just how inexpensive the ammo is. You can shoot ammo all day. You'd have a hard time spending more than like five or ten dollars or something like that. So, uh, so this is my 22. Uh, when I first got a gun, I thought 22s were lame because they didn't like bang really loud, and they didn't. Uh, yeah, so you can see it all. They didn't bang really loud, and they didn't. Um, uh, like they, they're not good for killing people or anything like that. And I was like, ah, oh, so twenty twos are lame. But then after a while, it was like, oh, you know, twenty twos are kind of fun. You can shoot them all day. You can do your thing, and and uh, yeah. So if you're just shooting to put holes in paper, like I do most of the time, a twenty two is a really cool gun. Um, if you're shooting to kill people, then I'll get something else. This is a 12 gauge shotgun. Oops. This is a 12 gauge shotgun. Uh, it's loaded, but there's not one in the chamber, so you have to, you know, do this to to put a, a round in there. I was just checking. Let me, like, double check. Yeah. So the way a shotgun works, if you have no idea, the the shell comes out of here, and then this bottom barrel is filled with other shells. So when you go like this. It comes, you know, through this little action here, and then loads up to be ready to fire. So this bottom part is filled with rounds, but uh, there's none in there right now. I, I would have to, you know, rack it and uh, and put it. But this is a 12 gauge shotgun. If you ever 
look down the end of it, you're, you're going to have a bad day. But uh, this is kind of another home self-defense type thing. So I have another gun too. Hold on. This is my most accurate gun. It's a Savage in 223. Uh 223 like it's funny. Uh some people don't consider it a very powerful round like a it's on it's borderline as to whether or not you'd want to kill a deer with a 223. But it is also the choice the 223 556 are virtually the same thing. It's also the choice of most like NATO, right? So when you get an M16 or an AR15 and most of the guns in Call of Duty fire the same round that this thing does. So 223 is probably one of the most popular people killers in the world, but it's not good for a lot of wildlife. Like it's borderline for deer. It's um it's fine for like wolves, uh, you know, anything smaller than a deer, I guess you'd say. And uh, you know, so this is my my 223. It's really accurate. At um at 100 meters, I could put 5 rounds into a quarter. Like, you know, if you know how big a quarter is, uh, not every time, but probably half the time. And, uh, you know, if you were to give me five rounds to hit a quarter, <laughs> that'd be every time, of course. But, um, but I could probably put all five rounds on a quarter at a hundred meters. So, uh, that, that's not special. Like a lot of people could do that. It just gives you an indication of, uh, of what the gun can do. So that's what, what this is. And I bought it because I, like I had the pistol and then at my range, I have an indoor range is a hundred meters long by me. And uh, uh, I would see other people shooting the rifles, like, on their sandbags and stuff. And I just, I was like, I want to try that, too. It's an aspect of shooting that was new to me. And uh, so I got this. Let me see. I think I have more. This is a Mosin Nagant. It's uh, it's kind of cool. Like, I bought it because I thought it was interesting. They're cheap and they're good, which is a rare combo, right? With almost anything in life. But uh, um, this one was built in 1942. So World War II ended in like 1945, and you can almost guarantee that this gun was actually used in World War II. Uh, it, it's not as if the Russians had extra guns. They really didn't. Um, they, uh, um, you know, they, they would make these guns and then immediately get them to the uh, the, the front lines as uh, as fast as they possibly could. So, um, so yeah, this is this is a Mosin Nagant, and uh, I have one. I don't know. I feel like I have this little piece of history. They're not uncommon. Lots of people have this little piece of history, but this one is mine. So, uh, yeah, it's not loaded. I like quadruple checked i should really shoot down but uh um yeah this is my mosin nagant it shoots a big round it, it, it gives a decent amount of kick when you shoot it but uh you know that that's how it works it's got these old school scopes hopefully this is on camera and like these ha have distance on them so you account for how much the uh the bullet is going to drop right so you can see like if you were going to shoot really far you'd put it up like that if you're going to shoot more close it goes down like that that's uh that's how this old school iron sights work but uh but yeah so these shoot a great big round if they hit you you're gonna have a bad day but uh all i've ever shot with this is paper to be honest with you like um what round does it shoot oh shucks somebody else know what round it shoots i could look at it i've got some in the in the gun thing hold on
So I'm hoping that you guys can see this pretty clearly. This is what that accurate one shoots, and uh, it's a it's a two two three, which is virtually the same as a five five six. They're so identical that you can usually shoot them out of either gun. And uh, the part you want to focus on is the part here. I don't know if you can see this dividing line very well. The color kind of changes. That little tip thing is the bullet. So all the rest of this is just gunpowder. You know, you tap it on the back like that. The gunpowder explodes and it pushes the bullet out the front. Compare that to the Mosin Nagant, right? First of all, you can see, I hope I'm not blocking it too much. First of all, you can see just how much more gunpowder there is uh, to push the bullet. And second, look at the size of the bullet compared to what the NATO round does, right? This thing has that much bullet to it. And this guy has you know, that much bullet to it. If I line up by bullet there, I don't know if this is working, but, uh, yeah, so there's just a lot more gunpowder, and there's a lot more bullet behind the old Mosin Nagant. And I don't know if this is boring, but uh, uh, the the issue with this bullet, this big one, you think to yourself, like, oh, I want a giant bullet. Let me show you what a giant bullet looks like. You know the Barrett, the 50 cal? That looks like this. Right? So uh, and someday I'm going to microwave this giant bullet. But um, this is what the 50 cal shoots. And you can see the bullet starts at about here. It's a little less obvious, I think. And you think to yourself, like, oh, yeah, I want this guy. This guy is super awesome. But um, there's a problem, right? Every time the bullet gets bigger, it takes a little better marksman to shoot it accurately. So that's one problem. Uh, the other problem is that um, uh, if you want to, like, like, let's say you're in some big firefight type uh, um, environment where, I don't know, you're going to be shooting 500 rounds that day, then, uh, <laughs> then you know, do you really want to carry, let, let's say that, you know, you can only carry so much. You're going to carry as much as you can. You could probably carry... 200 of these or 100 of these or if you're going to you know ex you know bring that out you might carry 500 of these and only 200 of these big guys so while you say like yes i absolutely want to put this thing into the enemy you have to ask yourself you know well do you want to carry 200 of these or 500 of these do you want to run out in the afternoon or do you want to go all day that's those are the decisions that uh you know people who decide what should be a standard round have to make so uh so and this is by the way intense recoil but even this thing um it recoils enough that unless you're sh like you know someone who really likes shooting and doing it all the time uh you might start to flinch or start to anticipate the pain that, that comes from a shot like this whereas with a shot like this it doesn't hurt at all you can shoot them all day so uh um I don't know. There's just a couple bullets. Like if, if a lot of people maybe haven't seen, I think I'm covering it. A lot of people haven't seen these bullets. So there's a 50 cal. This is a Mosin Nagant round, and this little guy is what most uh, U.S. military guys shoot. Now I've heard that the, the military cha standard changed to 308. I don't have any of those around me, but uh, um, it's somewhere in between those two. So uh, bullets. Let me put these away. I'll be right back. And the only gun I haven't showed you is probably not all that uh, interesting, but uh, this is a pellet rifle. <laughs> and to make it go, let me see if it's loaded or not. It shouldn't be. No. Uh, to make it go, <laughs> so my father-in-law got this. And um, uh, someone asked how big I am. I'm six foot. My father-in-law bought this because he was having trouble. He had a, he died recently, but um, he had a lot of property, like 10 acres. 
and it was getting torn up by like gophers or groundhogs or something like that. So uh, uh, what he did is he he bought this gun and he was going to use it to take care of like the little rodents around. But it's a pump gun. So what would happen is he'd spot the rodent and then he'd do this. I have a hurt wrist. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, ten. And then he's ready to shoot. That just shot air. But um, while he was doing all this pumping, the rodents would run away. <laughs> and He never killed anything. So, uh, um, yeah, he eventually gave this to me because uh, um, he like it they had no use for it so uh so hope has shot this thing uh, it's quiet enough that i can shoot it in the backyard and it doesn't like bother anybody uh, it's it's really that, that made no noise at all it didn't work but uh yeah so this thing does i don't know why it didn't go i thought it would but anyway um uh, yeah this is my pellet rifle it's it's not that interesting in terms of guns but uh it's interesting to me because my father-in-law gave it to me, and it's like, it's probably one of the only things he's given to me. But uh, anyway, I'm going to put this back. I was talking to uh, FPS Russia about it, and I was like, you know, how dangerous is this thing? You know, like, did, do you think I could kill this with it or that with it or take out a street light like you know what do you think it would do and uh fps rush is like if you're not careful with that gun you could wound a bird <laughs> so <laughs> so that gun is uh is not that interesting but but yeah so someone asked to see my guns now you've seen my guns let's see what else there is for for q a what's my view on the new astro a50s so uh, they're interesting to me. Oh, first of all, keep in mind I have not touched them, right? So, so this is not much of a review, but um, uh, I've heard a couple things about them. One, if you go like this, then the mic mutes. So that's kind of interesting. Another is I heard the mix amp was built into the headset, so there's no separate piece. You just do, like do this and such. And uh, I don't know, like I. Uh, the A40s, I'm really, really happy with. And I don't just say that because I, I get them free. You know, I, I, how do you say this without coming off like a douche? Like I, I'm pretty sure if I contacted Turtle Beach or Triton or Steel Series or whatever, they'd be interested in uh, like having me wear a free headset. Right? Like I live stream all the time. I think everybody knows what this is. The day I change headsets, I think a lot of people will be like, hey, what's your new headset? So um, uh, free headsets are not like something that would make me like lock into somebody but uh, uh i really like the a40s they sound pretty good uh the the i should say this the mic works pretty well the audio works really well the mix amp works great it allows me to do things like talk on the pc and talk to people at the same time and a lot of headsets don't do that that's that's kind of a youtuber's specific requirement but it meets it and most of them don't so i really like this the a50s I don't know. I'll, uh, you know, I talked to Astro at E3. Like, they didn't have a booth or anything, but I knew the guys. And uh, I talked to Astro, and uh, they said that they would hook me up with free A50s. Like, I would be in that first batch. I would get, like, a priority shipment. So I'll give you guys, like, a fair review on them early. But, uh, you know, it's not herpes, you bastards. It's just a pimple, <laughs> you jerks. But, um, uh, Anyway, you know what happened actually with the, I didn't shave for like three days. And for me, like if I grow like a bit of a beard, uh, I tend to break out. So I, I guess it's, uh, it's, it's my thing for being lazy. That's what the deal is. Uh, what's a good gaming website? It depends what you're looking for. Uh, if you're looking for forums, I actually do like Huppet Gaming. That's mine. Um, if you're looking for reviews and stuff, Giant Bomb is my very favorite. Uh, giant bomb they do these reviews they're kind of funny to watch they're usually right on top of things so uh so that's you know that's what i like a lot um ingrown hair i don't think so i think it was just dirty i don't know i, I don't know when i when i let the i guess it wouldn't be ingrown though if it was if it grew out 
I don't know what the deal is. But uh, it'll get better. It'll get better fast. And I don't have herpes, jerks. You guys are going to say that forever now. Um, let's see. This Q&A went on twice as long as I thought it was going to. Who am I supporting in the 2012 election? Um, I'm not locked in yet. Like, if I had to vote today, it would probably be Obama. But uh, I'm definitely still watching the campaign and making my decision. Like, I, I, I reserve the right to change my mind. So, uh, so that's that. Uh, tell us fun facts about your wife. She walks, like, 25 miles a week. She still fits into her wedding dress 15 years later. She, um, oh, you probably mean the silly fun facts, like the beginning of Wife Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm about to go to high school. Could you give me some tips for high school? Oh, I, you know, I do that video every summer. I do one for high school and one for college. And uh, I'll do that. I, I, it, and and then on top of that, I ask people in the comments to like give their own tips. So um, so yeah, I'm, I'll do that. About to go to high school. It's only June, baby. Um, do the saltine challenge. I am pretty sure we have saltines in the house. We um, we found them. Like and I, unless somebody ate them in the last week, they should be around. And I was gonna say the saltine challenge for PKA, but uh, but I have every intention of doing that. Someone said, "Is T Martin T Martin's mom hot?" I don't know. I've never actually seen like video of T Mart's mom. I have spoken to her, and she's really cool. Like I like T Mart's mom a lot, but uh, I wouldn't know her if I was in the same elevator. So, so that's that. Will there be a PKA this Thursday, which is two days away? Yes, yes, there will be. Where is Hope? Hope's in bed right now. She got in trouble today. She was being disrespectful toward me. And it's not anything like, like, like if I were to repeat what she said, like she said, don't you have a live stream? That's nothing, right? But it was the way she said it. There was like, like I was giving her a hard time. And then she's like, don't you have a live stream as like with this sort of get out of the room, I'm done talking to you inference. And, uh, and I yelled at her. She got in trouble because you're not supposed to be disrespectful towards your parents. You know, that's. Like, I don't know what she's doing or saying. Like, I'm too stupid to pick up on that or, like, I'm going to put up with it. it so, you got to keep hope in, in line. But uh, people who want to see her, uh, it's 1120 right here. So, she's in bed. When is my next live stream and will I do Portal 2? So, um, my next, next live stream will probably be PKA on Thursday unless I do one tomorrow. Um, I don't know any more than that. Like, I, I haven't planned anything out ahead, so I don't know when my next live stream is. I've done Portal 2 before. I actually prefer Portal 1 for a live stream, unless we're talking about the co-op. The thing about Portal 2 is it's long. Like, so I played it through, and it took me, like, I don't know, 10 or 12 hours. But uh, now that I've played it through, I think twice... I could probably do it in five or six, but even that is a pretty long time. So, uh, so yeah. Any advice on driving for the first time? Yes, I have a few pieces of advice. Um, here's one. You're at an intersection, right? Like, picture a red light, and you're going to make a left-hand turn. You don't turn your steering wheel until you're ready to make that turn. So that is, like, there's this temptation amongst new drivers when they're going to make a left at, like, a stoplight or stop sign or whatever, to turn the wheel in advance and then get ready. Get ready to make that turn. Or let's say there's not even a stoplight. Like you're in that middle lane that sometimes exists in roads, and you're going to turn into like a subdivision or something like that. Some people, new drivers, will sit there with the wheel turned so that all they have to do is press the gas and they'll start going. But that's a mistake. Don't sit there with your wheel pointed anything but straight. And the reason is, if somebody bumps you from behind, which is not that uncommon, right? Sometime in your life, someone's going to hit the rear of your car. If you sit there with the wheels turned, then he bumps you into oncoming traffic. See that? If you sit there with the wheel straight, he just bumps you forward. So uh, so that that's my ad advice for new drivers. Do not turn left in advance because if anyone hits you in the back, he, uh, he pushes you into oncoming traffic. And that's, that's a, you're going to have a bad time. 
<laughs> what state do I live in? I live in North Carolina. What online or do I have the on live gaming system? On live. Maybe I don't. I don't know. What is on live? Do I have to look that up? Play video. Oh, I've heard of it. This is like the cloud based gaming system, I think. And no, I've never used it. I, I I don't have that. I wonder how how good it is. <laughs> you want paintballing tips from me? Uh, I don't think I'm qualified to give you paintballing tips unless you're really really new. I've been paintballing maybe four times, and uh, um, it's a lot like Call of Duty, you know, in that you have to like move from cover to cover. You know, only show the the tops of your you know, like it, you want to minimize the amount of you that there is to shoot. If you stand out in the open, you instantly die, just like Call of Duty. So you want to pop your head out, shoot, pop your head out somewhere different, shoot, etc. That's um, that's how paintball works, and it's fun. It hurts a little, but I think that pain is like part of the good stuff. It, if paintball didn't hurt at all, then there'd be no like downside to getting shot. There'd be no downside to making bad decisions. The fact that paintball is painful and leaves big bruises and welts and stuff like that, it, uh, I don't know. It just makes it a little more, like, for real or serious or whatever. I don't know. I think it's cool. How do you get sponsors? Shucks, I don't know. I'm not very good at getting sponsors. Um, sometimes I'll, like, contact a company and I, I have, like, statistics on my channel, like, views and subscribers and things like that, and ask them if they want to be featured. Uh, like, with Scuff, the controller... Uh, this is how it went. I called him up and I said, look, I love your controller. I'm going to do a review and it's going to be pretty positive. Um, we can leave it there and I'll just put a review up. Or you can give like a coupon code and I'll you know, throw a link in the description and you guys can, uh, you know, can give my subscribers a discount. And they thought about it and they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we'll definitely do the link thing because they felt like even though it gives you guys a discount, they would get more sales out of it. And uh, sometimes it's just that. You know, I just call people up and and say like, hey, oh the um the glide camp. So have you guys ever seen me at? Uh, I know at the Dominican Republic, I like glided over the beach, and then at PAX and E3, my footage kind of had me like gliding around through the crowds, going up and going down. That glide cam, that device was five hundred and fifty dollars, but I got it for free because what I did is I called the guy up and I said, look, you know, I've, I've checked out all the glide cams, and I like yours the best. Um, I'm going to buy it. Or I'm, I said, I'm going to get one. Now the choice is yours. Uh, you can either give me a free one, and in my video, I'll, I'll mention the glide cam, and I'll point it out and have a link in the description, or I'll just pay for it. The choice is yours. You can either hook me up with the, the thing, or um, or I'll hook you up with the money. Like, it's it's all up to you. So uh, they said, oh, yeah, we'll much rather give you a free glide cam if you give us a plug compared to you buying it. And uh, And sometimes stuff like that happens. So, so yeah. Um, <laughs> can someone explain what PKA is? PKA is painkiller already. I do a like a live stream, kind of similar to what you're watching now, but it will have at least three other people in it. And it's it used to be a podcast we put on iTunes, but um, uh, I don't know. It lasts. Uh, yeah, I guess we say two hours, and sometimes longer than that. And that's that's my thing. People want to see the glide cam. Let me know. I don't know if that's more than one person. Let me know if you want to see the glide cam. And, and what that does. Uh, GTA 5 or Watch Dogs? I don't know. I haven't played either of them. So, so that's that's that. Uh, do you like where Guns for Hire is going with this channel? Uh, I haven't watched a lot of his videos lately, but I like everything Guns for Hire does. Like He always... You know, brings energy to his stuff. He brings some sincerity. Like Guns for Hire is a good YouTuber, and uh, you know, I, I bet he's really successful. I, I, I'm a friend of Guns for Hire. I, I think he does great work. Oh, yes, to the glide cam. You guys want to see that? All right, um, it's in the other room, so I'll just be one second, just a bit.
All right. So this is my glide can. It has three parts. I will put it together for you. Goes about like that. Uh, this is my camera. At the moment, it you see the monitor on it, and uh, this is a wireless lapel mic setup. So I'm going to remove that. And now you see just a camera. Now this is not the lens. Using a glide cam is called flying. And it's not the lens I usually fly with, so it won't be balanced properly. But this thing... Goes in like this. Let's see how... Oh yeah. It's not balanced at all. Let me see if I can just do like a rough job of balancing it. This lens is too light. Let me just see what I get here. Alright, that's roughly it, right? So, now you can see that this thing is on a glide cam. And when you carry it, a light camera like this normally, it's all shaky. And you don't notice it too, too much. But you really do see the difference when you fly around. And watch how this thing moves. It's almost like an owl's head, right? When I go back and forth like this. It uh, it kind of stays pointed and level, and you know. So even when I like dodging crowds, and I pull this thing up in the air, and then I pull it down, and I weave around people, it uh, it has a much nicer effect. Now this isn't balanced, like I said, it's the wrong lens. But I wanted to give you guys like a rough idea of what a glide cam does. And then you're not supposed to touch this very much. Sometimes you just glide it, you know, tap it a little bit. Uh, when I want to point to something, you know, I'll just give it a little steer and let it, you know, it, it spins around like this. So I'll just give it like a little bit of a tap and go like this and then, you know, correct it and keep it pointed straight. And uh, it's a bit of a talent to, to do this thing. So uh, um, I, I practice around the house for like weeks when I first got it so that when I went to the Dominican Republic, I wouldn't suck at using it. and. Uh, I don't know. It's when you use it, you should be touching it a little bit like you have a glass of water that's filled to the tippy top. And uh, and then you should just be, you know, barely guiding this thing. But uh, that is my glide cam setup. And it's what makes those walking around shots I do smoother than, you know, the guys who just carry an iPhone and bounce around. So uh, so that's that. Um, when will another PS3 live stream be? Uh, oh, someone said, why don't I like Pwnstar? <laughs> you know, I typically don't talk about other commentators. Um, I didn't ever do anything to Pwnstar, actually. The question would be why he doesn't like me. I, um, uh, I know I, 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 when his channel was new, I did a dual com with him. I, like, helped him out a whole bunch of times. Uh, he kind of backstabbed me, and then I forgave him for it, and then he did it again, and now I just, uh, don't work with him. That, that's kind of how it went down. So uh, every so often he makes a video on me. I shouldn't have even said anything. Um, you know, he runs, he does his thing. I do mine, and I, uh, you know, let him do his thing. Uh, he, he can be him. I just wish he didn't talk about me. Uh, Syndicate, Syndicate's a great guy. Uh, he's all good. What do I think about Syndicate? Yeah, a lot of guys are asking. Syndicate runs a great channel. He is immensely popular, and he never uses his channel to like. I mostly measure people on whether or not. You know, they're making videos about other commentators, whether they're tearing them down, stuff like that. And Syndicate never does that. You know what Syndicate does? He makes videos that his subscribers enjoy. So, like, what's wrong? There's nothing but perfection out of that. And that's that's what I want my channel to be. I wish I could take back my last 30 seconds. I am, um, you know, I, I like my channel to be just making videos that my subscribers enjoy. Right? That's what it's, That's what YouTube is supposed to be about. Uh, it's not supposed to be about all this drama and hating on other people and and all that other sorts of nonsense. Um, you're supposed to be making good videos. That's what you're supposed to be doing. 
Um, my wings is good too. Wings is good. What's the best kill streak reward for Bottom Warfare Three? I'm torn. I, I swear, like, I feel like most of the things in the assault tier lately, and um, they, I feel like most of the things in the assault tier lately are not as powerful as they ought to be. Like, attack helicopter, man. Those things, I'm lucky if they get a kill. Um, someone said, where's Portal? I finished the game. I beat the whole thing. Uh, attack helicopter, I'm lucky if I get a kill. Pavlo, I feel like I'm lucky if I get two kills. Same thing with the Reaper. Like People are just ripping everything out of the sky super fast. Lately, I've been running Predators and Airstrikes. Uh, one, they're good for holding objectives, and I play a lot of objective-based games. And two... With the Predator, I feel like if I get it, there's a really good chance I get an airstrike. So it's almost like a double kill right there. So so that's it. Uh, if you really want to go like try hard and win a game, uh, UMPs and Stealth Bombers are gigantic. Uh, UMPs and Stealth Bombers do so much to help your team win, right? They can like kill everybody. Um, the the EM, Am I saying UMP? I mean to see EMP. EMPs, you know, they shut down the other team for a while. Having no map, Having no um, uh, kill streaks, they do a lot to help your team. I disable them when I do my live streams, and I remember because uh, I find them to be a little OP, and I just I, I think they they they're not fun. So I, I disable EMPs and, and stealth bombers in my domination because they just I feel like they're game ruining. And then uh, like for the second half of the game, it feels like EMPs and, and stealth bombers are just dropping constantly, and that sucks. Um, someone asked, will Taylor be on Painkiller already? He will be. Yeah, I asked him in, in advance, and he said that he'd be available for PKA on Thursday. So, so that's that. Uh, <laughs> let me see what else. White Boy runs a good channel. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, White Boy again, right? You know, he's not making videos about other people. Like, that to me is one of the primary ways in which I judge another channel. Um, it's not about whether I like their videos or not, right? And I'm not saying I don't like White Boy's videos. I do like most of them. Um, but, you know, if some guy hypothetically were to upload videos of... Oh, I know. There's a guy who uploads videos of, like, cartoon-drawn cats. And the cats will, like, play with yarn a little bit, bat it around, and then they're, like, two minutes long. He's hugely successful. Every video gets like 5 million views. I don't remember his, his name. And uh, I watch those videos and I'm like, like I, don't, I don't understand why the videos are so popular. But I'm not the guy that decides how many views or subs somebody should have, right? You are. You, the viewer, are the one that decides whether or not a channel is strong or weak. And um, uh, one thing I do recognize about his channel is that... Uh, it because there's no like language to the cartoons. It's multilingual, and people from all over the world can enjoy it. Whereas my channel, like if you don't speak English, you're probably not getting very much out of my channel. So, so he has that going for him. But what I was going with this is, even though his channel's not my cup of tea, because I'm not really a cat person and I'm not really a black and white cartoon person. Um, I have like I think his channel is obviously really successful. That is totally his thing. Um, you know it. He's doing great with his channel, and he's not hurting anyone, so you know, congratulations on your success. When I look at other people's channels, I don't grade them based on how much I love their videos. I grade them based on whether or not they're being good people and running clean channels and, and doing that sort of thing. You know, If you're a nasty little hater that just talks about other people, I think your channel sucks. <laughs> um, but you know, if your videos are not my cup of tea, but you run a great channel, then you know, I think your channel is great. That's how I look at it. Uh, <laughs> say penis to prove you're live. Oh, Shoe Nice, right? He's another example. Like, I've seen people fuss at Shoe Nice recently. And uh, to me, like, it, if you guys don't know Shoe Nice, oh, my God. Uh, I think it's actually Shoe Nice 22 or something like that. Um, he eats things, crazy things. Like, he'll, like, pretend this was a bottle of vodka, but, like, you know, the full-size one. He'll show you the seal, like open it, put his mouth on it, and drink it. I can't do it. This thing is too big. And then he, he pulls it up. And uh, um, and then he'll just guzzle a whole bottle of vodka like I could barely do with water. Um, I've seen him eat um, a 
a tube of caulk, like a like a plumber or a painter would use, or you know whoever uses caulk. Um, I've seen him do that. Uh, someone said quit referencing obviously Jesus. I wasn't even thinking of him. I was thinking of somebody else, but he fits in that category too. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, he eats oh Formula Four Hundred Nine. He just sits there. He guzzled a whole thing of Formula Four Hundred Nine. So, uh, but you know he just. <laughs> His channel shocks me, and uh, I don't know. It's like I, like I don't want to watch, but I can hardly prevent myself from watching. That's what I think of, of Shoe Nice's channel. I, I can't stop. Uh, let's see. Does Taylor have a YouTube channel? No, he doesn't. Although, um, he was talking to me actually about starting a YouTube channel. One of the things I found endearing about Taylor is that he doesn't even have a YouTube channel. Whenever I meet new people, I've become really cautious about what they want from me. Um, I remember Hutch was like that two years ago. And at the time, I was like, Hutch, you're so sensitive about being used. I don't understand where you're coming from. And uh, now I understand exactly where he's coming from. Uh, like, I, everyone who met Hutch would just immediately be like, oh, by the way, I have a YouTube channel. Can I have a dual com? Can I have this? And Hutch was like, you know, if you do that, I just assign you to what he would call, you know, the asshole category and, and not want anything else to do with you. And um, uh, I, at the time, I was like, man, that's so harsh. Like, I don't get it. But now, after being, like, I, I would say that, like, maybe my position in the, in the community is comparable to the position he was in a few years ago. Um, I, I see where Hutch was coming from. Like, now I've met... 5,000 people who say, hey, Woody, really love your stuff. Will you do this for me? Will you do that for me? You know, with their palm out, asking for, you know, all sorts of things. And I understand how Hutch got, like, now I've become really sensitive when I meet new people to being used. And one of the cool things with Taylor, who's on PKA, he didn't even have a YouTube channel. He just enjoyed the show. And we called him, and he was funny, and he added to the show, and he was great. And, uh, like, so... So Taylor's nothing but awesome. Now, he talked to me about making a YouTube channel. And I was like, yes, you know, the, the first thing um, you need to do, like, I was, here's some advice that I give to brand new YouTubers, like people who don't even have a channel yet. It was like, get your branding right. Um, one of the things that, as a fan of Hutch, was hard for me to be his fan was, like, his gamer tag changed a lot. He was like, Optic Hutch, the Mighty Hutch, the I Mighty Hutch, Hutch's Yo Daddy. He had all these different gamer tags. And, um... All of those gamer tags were different than his YouTube channel, which was like Sean0728. And the spelling of Sean was a one that wasn't very common. And then his gamer tag was different than his YouTube channel, which was different yet from his Twitter. And I think his Twitter might be even different from his Facebook. So all those things were different. I was like, man, you know, if you have no subs right now, choose something and make that um make that like your brand and lock it in on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and whatever else, you know, you want to get. So, uh, um, he hasn't done that yet. He hasn't chosen his name. And I was like, your name can be anything, right? Like, uh, uh, here's what your name needs to be. If you're a brand new YouTuber, here you go. It needs to be easy to spell. It needs to be easy to pronounce and it needs to be easy to remember. That's it, right? Like if you think of some of the strongest brands in the world, Nike, um, I'll say Kinko's. I think they're out of business now. Uh, Coke, uh, Pepsi, um, you know, like any of these things. These are all non-words. They don't mean anything except for, like, you know, the brand that they've built up around it. I'm like, you know, go ahead, name yourself, whatever. Shoe Nice is a great name. But Shoe Nice 22, I, I think, is not as good as Shoe Nice would have been, you know. But, uh, so yeah, he's going to figure out what his YouTube channel is going to be, and then he's probably going to uh, to grow from there. That's that's his deal. So he'll have a channel eventually, but he doesn't have one right now. Trojan. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, I think he will have a channel. But but like I was saying, one of the cool things about him is he was just a fan of Painkiller already. You know, The reason that he hit the ground running in Painkiller already and instantly started doing so well is he had watched like 70 episodes of PKA already and knew uh, you know knew what to do. Like X-Jaws is a really good uh, name. And by the way, he has X-Jaws on Twitter. He has X-Jaws. On Facebook, I think uh, maybe not Facebook, but he has extras on YouTube for sure. So, uh, um, you know, that's a really good brand. C Nanners, C Nanners is one of my favorite examples, right? So, the term C Nanners itself wouldn't mean very much without the legend behind it, right? You know, like it, 
if you bet a brand new YouTuber who had never heard it before called CNanners, you'd say like, all right, you know, whatever. Who is this person? I'm interested in it. But CNanners is easy to spell. It's easy to remember. It's kind of endearing, you know, but it, it just, like, it's a great YouTube name, but it's also kind of a blank slate before anybody took it. So, uh, so yeah, that's what I look for. You know, I think he wanted his YouTube channel to be Fergel1122 or something like that. And I'm like, no, no, that, that's not that good. You know, <laughs> I'd much rather you be Waka Man or something like that. You know, W-A-K-A Man or, you know, something not taken because uh, that's like memorable and it's when it means something. It, it's whatever. But uh, Fergel1122 or Sean0728, like those are not um, really great. Um, channel names, I think. Uh, how come I don't play Minecraft? As a matter of fact, I'm going to start playing. Uh, I was just talking on Skype to Onslaught, Bash, me, and maybe some other guys too. We're going to jump in and play some Minecraft, and I'll put it on my um, on my YouTube channel, and you'll see me sort of pop my Minecraft cherry. And then, maybe as I uh, get more experienced, I'll start playing with you guys and stuff. Like, I don't really know how that works. Like, I don't know how to invite you into my place. I don't know how to remove you from my place. Like, let's say that I wanted to do something similar to Modern Warfare 3, where, uh, um, you know, I, I, like, grab 10 people, play with them for half an hour, and then grab 10 new people. I don't know how Minecraft works with that. So, um, so I have to sort of know more before I figure out whether it's good uh, streaming material. Or I should say, like, play with you material. Um... Oh, what about wings for Minecraft? That's not a bad idea either. So uh, he might be cool to bring in because I know wings has some Minecraft experience. He streams it on his channel. Um, I'm looking for questions. <laughs> hey, Woody, enjoying the stream. One more thing. F Kyle. All right. All right. I see that. Uh, how about PewDie or PewDiePie? Yeah. PewDiePie is doing great on YouTube right now. He, um, he does mostly Let's Plays, I think. And uh, that's it's kind of a different space than I'm in. But uh, I, he seems fine by me, right? Like, I, I, I haven't watched many of his videos, but um, I, he's, he's tremendously successful. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, congratulations, PewDiePie. He's just crushing it. So, so good on him. Who's a better COD player, me or Xtraws? Probably Xtraws. Um, I've played with him in Black Ops a couple of times, and I played with him in Modern Warfare 2, actually, also. And uh, um, I'll say the skill gap wasn't as big as you might think. Like, he's a strong player, and I don't mean to knock him. But uh, at the time, like, I was playing with strong players all the time, right? I was playing with Onslaught, I was playing with Team Art, I was playing sometimes with Marker J, Wings of Redemption, and then we'd grab X-Jaws. And uh, in an environment like that, he would lead the lobby sometimes, but, you know, it, it seemed like we were all taking turns leading the lobby. Uh, so, but, you know, in the other environment, like, to, you know, where, where you go into, like, pub matches and then take advantage of, or I should say, you know, really excel, you know, in a public match, he, I think he does that better than me. Like, I've never had a 185-kill game. Like, did he have a 285-kill game on... um? What was that big village-like map on Black Ops called? I've forgotten it. He played demo. It was all three rounds. And he had a huge amount of kills. And uh, I want to call it village, but that wasn't what it was called. Uh, it had huts on one side. The stream's not updating. You guys probably all know the name of it right now. But x has posted some scores that I've never gotten. So jungle, thank you, jungle. That's what I'm thinking of. Um, so so I guess Xtros is the better player. But when we play together, you know, I, I want to say like he finished on top of me in the lobby like two out of three times. So uh, so yeah, he's better. But I, sometimes I feel like because I say I'm the unexceptional gamer every game, and uh, and I play the objective, which stops me from getting kill streaks I might have otherwise gotten, and I don't lobby shop and stuff like that. People put me down more than than I deserve. <laughs> Do I try hard? Yeah, a lot. Um, not every time. And uh, 
I also run a lot of bad setups. Like a, part of when I play, I test different guns. I work all the different attachments. Um, people don't want to see me play with the same gun a lot. So like, for example, I like the scar, but I posted two scar videos recently. So now I feel like I need to get like a KSG game or uh, I don't know, an SMG, maybe an MP7 game or something like that. That's different than the scar. Whereas if I could use the same thing all the time, you know, I would do even better. Uh, Someone said, I know you don't care about one sub, but this is going to make me unsub. I wonder what I did that made him so angry. Is it this live stream? I don't know. Uh, what would make somebody unsub about this? You don't like Q&A sessions? You don't like me complimenting other YouTubers? I don't know. I, uh, I can't imagine what has him so upset. One guy keeps asking, am I high? No, no, I don't smoke. Uh, how did PKA get its name? What happened was... <laughs> it started as um, Game Battles tryouts. Like in the very beginning, Wings of Redemption and I were trying to find two other, or maybe four other players, something like that, and round out a Game Battles team. So we were doing tryouts, and we would play pubs with um, with other guys, and uh, they were amazingly good. Like they would just crush other players. We had this guy Preus. He would um, he would rush into the enemy spawn. And they would run away from him like deer. Like, it'd be him going on four guys, and they would just all tear off. You know, I, on Terminal in Modern Warfare 2, I would cap ADOM. You know, it was over there by the gift shop and that, like, uh, ticket counter type thing. I'd cap ADOM, and then I'd head into the plane. And by the time I got to the plane, they had Painkiller already. And Wings and I would just moan, like, Painkiller already? Really? Like, some guy died three times by the time I capped ADOM and went to the plane on Terminal? So, um, uh, and th that just became like, uh, I don't know, like a, a steady wine, like really painkiller already. And, uh, that's, that's how the podcast got named looking back. I don't love the name painkiller already. I, I feel like it's outdated. It's kind of tied to a call of duty that doesn't exist anymore or well, barely exists anymore. Um, I, I think if we called it like, I don't know, <clears throat> three gamers, one cup, or I, I don't really have an idea. That uh, if we if we called it that, then it would have been more like enduring than something tied into the whatever it was, 2009 Call of Duty. Someone asked if I still play with Socrates. No, Socrates doesn't play as much as he used to since he joined the Navy. He did reach out to me, by the way, and ask me if I was going to play Borderlands 2. I was like, probably. And uh, he's like, oh, I really, really want to play with you because... Um, when I played Borderlands 1 with you, it was some of the most fun I've ever had in all of my gaming experience. And uh, it was like, like, I don't know, it was really heartwarming for me. Like He reached out to me, I think on Facebook or Skype, and set up time for me to play Borderlands 2 with him like nine months before it came out because he liked playing Borderlands 1 with me so much. And it was just like, like, I don't know, like, I'm this forever alone fan, but, like, Socrates really likes me, and, uh, <laughs> so, so what do you say, like, uh, uh, he doesn't play very much anymore, but we'll definitely play again together, and I felt, uh, uh, honored that, that Socrates, you know, thought back on his gaming experience and liked his time with me, it was like, oh, cool, like, I, I liked him a lot, but I didn't really know it went the other way. Uh, someone asked, do I watch Chris Smoove? Sometimes. Chris Smoove is a really good commentator. Uh, he plays a lot of sports games, and they're not my cup of tea. But uh, um, I, So I really like the man. Uh, his games aren't the one that I find interesting most of the time. But, uh, but dude, Chris Smoove is a quality guy. That's, that's all there is to it. Uh, do I like Mr. I Try Hard? I do. I do. Actually, I know Mr. Try Hard, Mr. I Try Hard in real life. Like, I seem to see him two or three times a year, and we talk more often than that. We're actually going to do a dual com uh, in the near future. Mr. I Try Hard is a, is a solid guy. So, yes, I do like him. <laughs> um, can I say meep? <laughs> meep. All right. What else is there to say? Do I like Blue Zephos? Yeah, I, I met them at. Uh, um, I've, I've only watched a couple of their videos. I actually watched one of their videos when Call when I want to say Modern Warfare Three first came out. They played it on the PC and it was really funny. Uh, I've watched maybe a Minecraft video or two, but I met them in E3. They actually 
bought a booth at E3, which is unusual for a YouTuber. Like, I think they're the only, most of the YouTubers went there as, I guess you'd call them participants or guests or something. But Yogscast actually bought a booth. So I was like, oh, I'll walk up to them and I'll, I'll say hello. And uh, um, I just, you know, I walk up, I shook their hand. I said I was Woody's gamer tag and they had recognized me like they knew of my channel. And I was like, you know, I, I knew you guys would be here. I, I thought I you know, didn't want to miss the opportunity to stop by and say hello. I congratulated them on how well their, their channel does. And, uh, you know, they said thank you. And they seemed like nice guys in real life. So uh, so that's that. You know, they, they, Blue Zepho seems to run a very solid channel. Everybody loves their videos. And, uh, you know, congratulations. They're, they're just doing awesome. So that's that. Uh, will I play Skyrim again? I got that earlier. Uh, probably when the new DLC comes out for it, I'll play some more Skyrim. Can I get Yoda Slayer on PKA? I don't know. Uh, someone's asking what I think of Yoda. Is it Yoda Slayer? Um, I, I don't know him. Is he one of the Blue Zephos guys? I think he is, right? He's one of those two. Um, I, I'm not very close with him. I guess we could reach out if we wanted to. But... Uh, uh, that's that. What do I think of Uber Hacks or Nova? I don't. It's, same thing as the other guy, right? He's a let's play guy. He's tremendously successful. He does his thing. It's it's awesome. You know, I you know, pretty much I like everybody who hasn't hated on me. That's kind of where I draw the line. Like it, I, I have this long history of helping people out, like either in commentary March Madness or Painkiller already or through dual comms. I feel like I've not that I made anybody, right? People make themselves. That's the deal. I've helped out a lot of people who didn't go anywhere. But I gave a lot of people in the YouTube community a boost. And then, you know, like, I don't talk to them for a few months and they start giving me a hard time. So, uh, you know, when that happens, I'm just, like, baffled. It's one of the reasons I'm really cautious about meeting new people. Um, that's uh, that's that. Mr. Phantasma's great. He was in, um, so Mr. Phantasma was in Commentary March Madness. And he went up against K-pop. And Mr. Phantasmo has a really passionate fan base. So um, K-pop beat him in the voting, right? And the way that the voting was done is we had judges. They were moderators from Huppet, Huppet Gaming, my, my website. And uh, um, I didn't want it to be just a popularity contest because then whoever had more subs would win every time. It was supposed to be based on how good the video was. So I had judges who were not me decide which video was better. And they decided that K-Pops was better. Well, man, the Nuggets, Mr. Phantasmo's guys, went wild. They were not happy about it at all. And um, uh, they would attack K-Pop. I think she lasted like two more rounds and was almost happy to lose just so the, you know, the darn Nuggets would leave her alone. But um, Mr. Phantasmo handled it with class the entire time. Uh, he asked the Nuggets to sort of you know, back off and leave her alone. And, uh, you know, I walked away from the experience thinking that Mr. Phantasm was a pretty nice guy who, uh, who handled the whole situation really well. So uh, that's, that's my experience with him. Um, what do I think of Half-Life? That's a good question. I'm going to get all these unsubs. Um, I played Half-Life. I thought it was fine. So I played Half-Life late. I should, I should like, um, caution that. I want to say I played Half-Life in, like, 2008 or something. So it was already a fairly old game. But it was supposed to be this magical, incredible, near-religious super experience. And uh, um, it was, like, this, I don't know, it was built up to be this huge thing. And when I played it, I was like, I mean, it's fine, but I don't get what all the fuss is about. And for me personally, I like it to be really, really clear what to do next. And I don't know, maybe the me of today would have an easier time following it. But the me of 2008 spent a lot of time just being like, really? What am I supposed to do? Right? Am I supposed to break a toilet? Am I supposed to do like, I didn't even know. I was looking at the possible achievements that you could get. And I would use them sometimes for clues on where to go. But uh, I... One of my problems with Half-Life is it didn't have, for me, the yellow brick road I needed to go to the next place. And another problem was that it, like, it just didn't get what made it so special. But, but that's me. You know, other people love the game. For me, it's, it's just okay. 
What will I do if YouTube ends? That's a good question. So, uh, YouTube, um, <laughs> I make a lot of money right now. Uh, I, I kind of like in my YouTube career, like I compare it to uh, a pro athlete, but not a good one. Not Peyton Manning or somebody that you've heard of. Like it, I, I assume you're all Americans based on what time it is right now. But, uh, you know, picture some guy in the NFL that you can't name, right? He only plays special teams and, and his career lasts like two and a half years and then he kind of washes out. That's me on YouTube, right? I'm making more money than I've ever made before. But, you know, at the cost of like career, you know, like it, I was in a steady job that lasted forever. And, you know, like when you're a senior software architect, you can do that until you're 60 and then retire. You can go into IT management or whatever. Me, you know, I took a break from that and I did the YouTube thing. So what I'm trying to do is land on my feet, right? Now I have a house, right? I, I'm going to pay my house off this month and I would not have done that otherwise. Wow, we do have people from Europe in here. <laughs> you guys, are, I appreciate you. Um, but now my house is paid for and that's a huge, huge deal. It wasn't going to be paid for this quickly if I stayed at my old job. And um, like, let's say hypothetically that, Colin's never in a spot to support himself, right? He has a place to live forever, right? Until the day he dies, all he needs to do is pay the real estate taxes, which are pretty cheap. Like there's this house, like not only do I have less financial like stress and pressure because I don't have a mortgage every month or I won't. Uh, I also have this sort of comforting knowledge that you know, if need be, Colin has a place to live for the rest of his life. That's really cool. Um, after this, maybe I'll fund a trust fund for Colin along those same worrisome lines. Um, I can fast forward Hope's college account. I can, uh, I can do, uh, you know, stuff like that. And then someday, like I think my YouTube career will end, right? Picture it like a TV show, right? You don't watch a TV show for 20 years, right? I got 20, 25 more years before retirement. Um, my YouTube channel won't last that long. People will be kind of take an interest in somebody else. Yeah. All the YouTubers kind of come and go. You can think about who your favorite YouTuber was two years ago. Is he your favorite YouTuber right now? You know, it, they have a life cycle. So uh, I think that someday I'll end up back in a white collar job, maybe a manager in an IT department or something like that. Uh, people don't know. Um, I'm qualified, right? I have two bachelor's degrees from college or university if you're European. One's in MIS and one's in accounting. Uh, I also have a master's degree in engineering with a focus in computer science. So, like, you know, I still have, like, a real resume. I left on good terms at my last place or I could go somewhere else. Um, someday, I'll probably, you know, face a YouTube channel that's not on the upswing like it is today, that's on the downswing. And, uh, and I'll look at that and be like, all right, you know, it's time to go back to the real world, but I think I'll never regret it. Back to the sports guy, right? Like, I'll look back and say, yes, what did my time on YouTube get me? Well, you know, I fast forwarded some of the savings I needed to do, like pay off debt, mortgage, college accounts, fund those things. And now I'm back in a regular job and I had what was just an amazing ride. You know, I, <laughs> I have to buy a new microwave almost every week. And now I pretty much enjoy the process. I'm like, I can't believe this is my real life. I can't believe when I throw a microwave in the back of my old truck that like, this is work. You know, this is, this is so nice compared to, to real work. So, um, so I think a little bit like some guy who spent two years playing for the Philadelphia Eagles, that's a, uh, American football team. If you don't know, um, some guy who spent two and a half years as a pro athlete and he, he never looks back and says, Oh man, I really regret my time. Uh, playing in the big show and whatever, making enough money that my house got paid off. And like my friend wasn't, not my friend, this guy from my high school, uh, he played football in, in the U.S., you know, the strong man football thing. Um, he played that for a couple of years and then he became a gym teacher. But he entered with his college, no college debt, his home was paid for. And, you know, like it, the rest of his life was simplified because of the time he spent playing uh, pro football. And I think I've gone on too long about this. But what happens after YouTube? Probably regular job like I had before. I'll be a regular guy. And uh, and that's 
that's what will happen someday. But for right now, this is just an unbelievable ride. I'm, I'm really lucky. Uh, X boy, Xbox Ahoy. Do I know him? Um, <laughs> know him? No, we had him on Painkiller already, and uh, it's interesting. Like different YouTubers do different things. Like if you watch my channel a lot, you kind of get to know me, right? Like I don't know you very well, but you know me. You, like, it, you know, like sometimes I meet people in person who've watched a lot of my videos, and it's like, wow, this is a, this is such a, rela- uh, a lopsided start to our relationship because you know everything about me. You know my wife, my kids, my finances, my home, my inner thoughts, my thoughts on like religion and politics, my sex life. Like you know so much about me, and I don't know anything about you. But if you watch an Xbox Ahoy video, you learn a lot about guns. You learn a lot about the game. You see production value that is unmatched on YouTube, but you don't really get to know Stuart. Like you don't, you don't like uh, like sync up with him on an emotional level. Like that's not how he runs his channel, and it's fine. He runs a great channel. Don't 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 take this as a knock. But um, someone said, "Do I know him?" I had him on PKA. He was a really friendly guy. Uh, he was more of a like he's so professional on his channel that I had this like scenario. Dri- built up in my head that the man's never said a bad word the man's a you know 45 year old virgin and the man's this and he's just like a pure kind of character and the truth is he's a real person like he's a real guy he has you know off color thoughts sometimes he you know he has regular emotions like everybody else he's such a machine in his videos then when we talked to him on pka and even like before and after pka he got to meet the man behind the announcing character that he plays on his channel and uh and i like him a lot but i wouldn't say that i ever got close to him uh just because that's that's how it goes wicked shrapnel wicked shrapnel is a really nice guy actually i um wicked (laughs) i don't want to throw anybody when wicked shrapnel was on pka wings of redemption was a little bit grumpy and uh um there were like wings of redemption took a little bit of heat for not being as nice to Wicked Shrapnel, like as he usually is to our guests, right? He, it wasn't his uh, his perfect day, so um, Wicked Shrapnel handled it with perfect class. You know, he was good the entire way. He never like Wings of Redemption was taking some heat afterwards, and he never joined in on that. He never piled on. He just was a really solid, good guy who didn't kick Wings when he was down, even though. I think a lot of people might have been tempted to fuss at Wings a little bit because uh, you know Wings was grumpy when he was on the show. So that whole like the way that he handled that and with the class that he handled it made me think really highly of Wicked Shrapnel. Like he's he's a solid guy, and I met him at E3 as well, and uh, he just he seemed really nice. So that's that. My daughter's favorite YouTube channel, Megan and Liz. Megan and Liz, it's a it's a music channel. They do a lot of covers. They sometimes do original stuff. And uh, there are two teenage girls. Just by looking at them, I'm going to call them like 18. I'm not exactly sure. And uh, my daughter's into music. We play guitar together sometimes badly. Um, And Megan and Liz, I think, are what she would like to see herself be five years from now. So I bet that, excuse me, that's her favorite. Um, Do I know X-Cal? Uh, I wouldn't say I know him, know him. Uh, like you, I kind of, I've watched a lot of XCal videos. Uh, I feel like I know him through his videos. I've played with him a couple of times, but uh, we're not tight or anything. We've invited on PKA a couple of times, and he said no, and this is old news now, so I don't mean to like dredge it up, but he said no in a way that like wasn't very nice. You know, he'd upload videos like, I'm not interested in your bullshit and stuff like that. And it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> A simple no would have been fine. Sometimes people ask us still to get XCal on PKA, and we're just like, nah, he doesn't want to be um, like disrupted or bothered with PKLer already invitations. Um, so uh, you know, XCal just does his own thing on his own channel. He wants to be left alone, so that's what I do. That's that. Uh, someone said this isn't Portal. You're right, uh, Zalen times one. <laughs> I played through all of Portal. I, I beat her. What was the Aperture Science. What is the... I forget the name of the robot person. 
How can I forget this? I'm sorry. But anyway, I beat the game. And I, I was going to do a QA for 15 minutes, and it's been over an hour. It just kind of kept going. So uh, I don't know what else to say. Do I know Zergriz? No. I have friends that know Zergriz. Like, I'm close with Hastro, and Hastro's close with Zergriz. And he says he's a great guy. Zergriz is another guy that's, like, never done anything uh, to make you GLaDOS. Thank you. Uh, Zergris is another guy that just runs a really great channel. He does his thing. Um, he has high standards for himself that make it hard for him to run his channel, and he still sticks to them. Like, for example, Drop Zone is a pretty easy place to get sniper clips. Um, it's a pretty easy place to get trick shots. I mean, you literally have people just laying on the ground waiting for you to shoot them. <laughs> you know, that's that's what they do. And uh, um, Zergris is like, no, no, no. You know, I'm not gonna not going to get my clips from drop zone. I want to beast on guys running regular guns, ACRs and stuff like that. So, uh, um, man, he does, you know, good videos. And uh, I don't know. I've got nothing but positive coming out of him. He seems like a, a good guy. And, um, I, oh, I remember this. I remember one time Onslaught was playing Modern Warfare 2 by himself. And he ran into Zer Grizz and his friends. And Onslaught, uh, he put on his tryhard pants and still lost the game. And in my head, like, I, this is all built up in my head, right? They didn't even talk to each other. It was all polite or whatever. But in my head, I felt like a rival gang had jumped one of my friends on the street and they were alone. And I was like, man, Onslaught, you lost? We can't put up with this. You, me, T-Mart, Wings, Kyle, we're going to go and we're going to take on Zergriz's clan. And Mike is like, why, dude? It's just a game. And I'm like, no, you can't lose. You can't lose. And uh, <laughs> so, like, I totally wanted to, like, get me and, and like, my friends and go up against Zergriz and his friends and uh, and play against them. And, and you know, like, it's like in my head, it was like you guys jumped Onslaught when he was alone in, uh, you know, in a lobby. But that, of course, isn't how it happened at all, right? He, uh, um, uh, you know, he, he was just playing. They bumped into each other in a uh, PKA. Or bump, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm reading. I'm losing my train of thought. They bumped into each other in a pub lobby, and, and that was the end of it. But uh, in real life, yeah, Zergriz seems pretty solid guy. I've got no problem with that, uh, even though there was one moment where I was like, no, you can't beat my friend. Do you feel bad for the awkward relationship you unintentionally made with JX23? Uh, I think I'm done picking on JX23. Uh, yeah, do I feel bad? No, <laughs> I don't. But uh, but I'm definitely done like dredging up uh, you know his little history. And then there's always the fear that maybe I don't have the the events quite perfect, and I don't want to get that wrong. Uh, somebody keeps asking about girl Ga girl gone gamer, and uh, I want to say I've seen one of her videos, but I haven't seen enough to like render an opinion. Like I I don't really know her that well. Uh, what happened to the intro you had for Mail Monday? Oh yeah, I like that intro, and I think subs like it too. Um, what happens is like I have a button that I click on my desktop to start a new video, and what it does is it starts a video, and it's more complicated to do my videos than you might guess. Like uh, there's the intro, and then on the outro, the outro is like seven tracks in Sony Vegas, and the uh, um the two ending videos need to be shrunk and put into place and so that they fit right on that like image that is the wood background with the subscribe box in the corner and all that stuff. So if I don't start from a template, then I'd spend like 40 minutes getting everything lined up just right. So I start all my videos from a template and that template has my normal intro, not the mail Monday intro. And, uh, um, so, you know, so I just, I tend to use that and not pay much attention to, um, you know, like I, it just, because I do that out of um, habit, I sort of stopped using that intro. I don't have a special Mail Monday template, so that's that's that. Uh, you like the old intro with the wooden controller? Uh, I liked it too. Um, when it When I first got it, I thought it was amazing. Like I thought that was the most incredible intro in the world. And uh, it had my, my saw stop. I have like a really cool table saw. And it had the wooden controller, and it was kind of specific to me, and it was cool. I never loved, loved the audio on it, but I thought the video on it was incredibly good. 
Um, but then over time, I felt like he, you know, he there was an intro in that style for almost everybody in uh, in Call of Duty. Like you know, I, I could name it. Like T Mart has one, Thunder has one. I think Onslaught had one at one point. Like everybody had a, the same intro from that guy. And uh, I'm crying. Read my comments. I don't I don't know what your comment is, <laughs> but um, the the intro that originally started is like so amazing that i was honored to have started to feel like it was just mixing in with everybody else's intro so when i had an offer to make a new intro uh, i went with it and another thing about my new intro is it's two seconds shorter which doesn't sound like much but i think it went from seven to five and the original one by the way was 12 so because you know i have this hope that people will watch this intro like 200 times maybe more i try to make it as short as short as possible you know what my perfect intro would be do you know the Intel three second ad? Intel is an ad, and I think the little song goes do 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 do. Like I, I, I wish I could do it better, but uh, it's just like four little tones. I think they play it on like a xylophone or something, and it's like do 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 do, and uh, that is the Intel ad. That to me is the perfect YouTube intro. Like it should just say you're watching a Wood intro or you're watching a Woody video. Here it starts. Uh, I don't. When I watch somebody else's video and the intro's 15 seconds long, and then sometimes people take like 30 or 40 seconds to set up what they're going to talk about, that uh, that loses me. Like, you know, if it's a minute into the video and you're not in the media commentary yet, then I think you're not doing it quite right. That's, that's my thing. Uh, how am I such a good comp- carpenter? <laughs> so, um, uh, carpenter and woodworker is actually a little different. Like carpenters work on houses, and I'm not very good at that. But building your furniture and stuff, um, I do do pretty well. And what happened was this: so I went to night school. I mentioned this earlier. Um, I went to night school, and I got three college degrees over the course of like twelve or thirteen years. And uh, I felt like the nerd side of me was really, really well developed. Like my comp sci, my like the whole nerd aspect of me was there. But the um the like what I guess I'll call the American male version of me, the guy that could work on a car or build something out of wood, was atrophied and weak. Because all I really did was like computer science. That was all I was, you know, doing for like a decade. So um I just decided like, you know what, I'm gonna go beef up the rest of me and become a more well rounded person. And I got into woodworking. I, I made my daughter's bed. It was this really cool bunk bed. It looked like a gigantic dollhouse. And I started making furniture all around you know, my house. And um, I uh, like the way that I'm wired is I tend to get really, really into whatever it is that I'm into. And uh, for a while it was woodworking. And it was like automotive, like rock crawling type stuff. And then it was gaming. It's been gaming for a while. But like whatever I like, I just like sink myself in it with a passion that you know most people manage to keep their hobbies and their interests at like this healthy kind of level. Like yeah, you know whatever I like cars too. But like when I like cars, all I did all day long was like read engineering books on how to build suspensions from scratch and racing things and drag racing things and rock crawling things. And I was on forums and. And, you know, reading about other people, I wanted to see pictures and trails. And I drove all over the country, like, looking for new challenges that I hadn't beaten before. And, and like, I get into things just so head over heels that, uh, um, you know, that I got kind of good at woodworking fairly quickly. So, so that's that. Uh, how did I meet T-Mart? <laughs> um, so, you, uh, earlier I talked about the Game Battles team. And we filled it up, and then a spot opened. And uh, I started checking. I had, like, hundreds of emails. And uh, T-Mart caught my attention as someone that we should, uh, um, like, you know, interview or try out. And I also saw his videos. T-Mart did, like, jumps and spots back then. And I was like, man, this guy is so COD smart. You know, he knows all these crazy places to be and, like, what helps for S&D and things like that. We need to play with him. And then I played with him, and uh, he was really easy to get along with, and he was strong. So uh, we brought him on the Game Battles team, which, by the way, is the same way that I met Onslaught. Uh, We played with different people, and there were some guys who were just a beast at getting high scores. Like, they were just excellent slayers. But Onslaught got in the game, and man, 
every time you were on his team, he was like a UAV. He was calling out everybody everywhere. He was he was making the whole team better around him. And it was like, I gotta have onslaught. Like it, his leadership capabilities sh- shine through, shone through uh, immediately, even amongst strangers. And uh, that's how I met onslaught. You know, he he was a good player, and then I played with him, and you know, he just like the the man behind the the player was just this great person. So, uh, so that was cool. Have I ever searched memes people have made of me on Google's images? Yeah, I have. They're mostly not very nice. <laughs> uh, it's actually just a couple actually common haters uh, made like a lot of those things. But um, you know, like, you won't find anybody uh, who's you know in front of the spotlight if that's what you call this who doesn't have other people trying to tear him down so uh you know it's just part of the deal i guess um i don't know i flandies uh. <sighs> Sorry, I'm blocking a guy. Uh, let's see. Do I have a P.O. box for fan mail? I don't. Did I ever get into fights in high school? I did. I got into more than my fair share of fights in high school. And uh, I didn't win them all. It's funny, a lot of guys, like once they finish high school, act as if they never lost a fight. And uh, in my opinion, if you never lose a fight, you probably only, like, that to me doesn't seem like the the bravest thing to do. You know, like, if you never lost a fight, you only fought on sure things. I lost some fights, you know. There were moments where it was like, this guy's picking on me. I want to, you know, stand up for myself. And I'm not sure how this is going to work out. And sometimes I won and sometimes I lost. But I didn't just, you know, roll over. It's easy to lose a fight if you, like, you know, beg for forgiveness and coward your way out of every situation in which it's not a sure thing and only pick on, uh, you know, little guys or something like that. So, uh, yep, (laughs) I was in some fights in high school. Um, In high school, probably through, like, my sophomore year anyway, I didn't have as good a filter on my mouth as I should have. You know, I was like sort of a class clown type character or someone said something that he didn't need to be called out on. I might call him out anyway, which was stupid. And uh, I don't know. The adult version of me is way better than like the 15 year old version of me. What do you say? Uh, looking for more. When will I do a live stream on the PS3? So I want to say I just did a live stream on the PS3 this weekend. So, uh, you know, that's that. <laughs> what do I think of Syndicate? You can tell I'm getting new people in here all the time. Syndicate's a great guy, but I've, I've answered that like a couple times already. Are there questions other than um, what do you think of this guy or that guy? Like, you know, mostly I like all the guys you were asking about, but I, mean, I don't want to say anything negative. I'm just. Let's let people do their thing. Uh, why don't I have a second channel? I actually have one called Woody's Outtakes, but I don't put videos on it very often. And uh, um, I guess the reason is, I, I don't know, I put them on my main channel. Uh, I, I think I have a, a sub base that's interested in not just like my games, but also in like, you know, what's going on in life. So. If I want to do a vlog, like, showing people my neighborhood, that's just as good for my main channel as it would be for my uh, second channel. So I tend to just put stuff on my main channel instead of starting a new one that would be smaller. So uh, let's do one more question, because I'm kind of wearing out. (laughs) Let's do one more and uh, pick a good one. It's definitely not going to be a what do you think of this person question. I'm waiting for an update. It's the YouTube chat, you know? It gives me, like, a burst of comments, and then uh, it waits. (laughs) 
Uh, how did I get my YouTube background? Well, so I guess that's the final question. Um, it came with my intro. Um, Sergeant Merrill approached me and said, like, hey, Woody, you know, we'll redo your branding. And, uh, you know, we'll get it right. Like, if you don't know, like, my YouTube channel matches my intro, and it matches, like, some other things. And I've got, like, the, if you see that sort of wooden Woody and the blue gamer tag, like, it, I swear, if I, if I change the words, like, if you look at the top of, I don't know if you're on my channel right now. But if you looked at the very top of it where it says Woody's Gamer Tag in the center, then uh, if I were to change those words to say, like, I don't know, Hello Kitty, in that same text and stuff, like, you would recognize it as the Woody's Gamer Tag, like, look to it. Um, it's on my intro. And that little dog tag looking thing, like, like, that's kind of mine too. So he approached me and said, like, hey, Woody, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> some guy wrote, fuck you, Woody, why didn't ask my questions? What am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he came to me and offered to, like, you know, like, hey, would you like an intro that matches YouTube background that, and with, like, uh, art that you can use on Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that? And uh, in exchange, I just sort of told everybody, like, hey, Sergeant Merrill did this for me. It's a service he sells if you're interested in having it done for you. And uh, and that's how he did it. So I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. If I ever get a new intro, I would hope that, you know, we'd be able to incorporate the same art that I have now into it so that uh you know I, I i could sort of stick with the the branding it's developed because i i like it and murka durka was the first one and i think he changed it since then whose intro matched his youtube channel which matched like something else and it was like wow i really like how he's he's kind of done it well you know all of his stuff fits together whereas most people on youtube it, it's like a, a mismatch of uh of different things you know it doesn't really fit someone said when's the new borderland vid um i should have a new one up every day so uh tomorrow morning i tend to upload them around noonish and then i upload my second video around three this is all eastern time so uh so yeah next border last <laughs> i did it two days ago i did it yesterday i'll do it today and uh you know just keep going with um with new videos so uh so that's that so i said what are you in your 30s yep i'm 39 but I think I'm going to call it a stream. Uh, this is pretty long. I just wanted it to be two hours. So I was going to go for 15 minutes. And I ended up going for like <laughs> uh, something like 85 minutes instead of uh, 15. So uh, so I guess that's it. I'll call it a stream. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys liked it. We'll do it again sometime.